Hey, folks, it is uh, Friday, December 22nd. That means you have four more days to take advantage of one of the best Sunset Lake Seba Day sales of the year. All of their gummies are 30% off with the coupon code, code mushroom. Mm. Why mushroom? Because they've got two new uh, gummies. Um, one is the... Um, Relax gummies. That's with Seba Day, Reishi, and Ashkawanda mushrooms. And the other one is Focus gummies, Seba Day, Lion's Mane, and Cordyceps. You will notice this one is only about halfway uh, full because, oh. not because they only send you half uh, these packages, because I've eaten half of them uh, over the past uh, couple of days. I'm enjoying them. But this one, the uh, Relax gummies, these are going to get used extensively. Over the next uh, week for me, I am traveling to go to um, someone special's uh, family's uh, uh, Christmas uh, time. And then my kids are, are coming to meet oh, us. Yeah? And uh, yes, we're all the way. We're going to be going uh, uh, to like uh, around to some of the uh, Grand Canyon type of stuff. Oh, and fun. Yes. But I'm going to need the relaxed gummies. Believe me, these are traveling with me. And right now, you can get them, too. I don't know if you'll get them in time for your uh, your Christmas trip. But the Focus Gummies, like I say, contain a blend of lion's mane, mushroom, cordyceps, and sabade to help you with attention and mood. And the Relax Gummies contain reishi, mushroom, ashkawanda, and sabade to help you better manage the stress and ground yourself. That's what I'm going to need. If you head to sunsetlakesabade.com, you can save 30% on all Sunset Lake Sabade gummies with the coupon code MUSHROOM. Plus, if you spend over $99, you can choose to add a free 20-count jar of the new gummies to your order. And don't forget, they also got the Sabade with a little bit of Tehse gummies mm. in there, uh, which I have availed myself of uh, recently as well. And, of course, the uh, melatonin ones, which I avail myself of oh. very consistently. Nightly. And also, they have the regular uh, Sabade gummies, 30% off. Coupon code MUSHROOM. And of course, as always, Majority Report listeners can save 20% on everything in the store with the coupon code Left is Best. Great company, great product, great business practices, great movement partners. Check it out. The sale ends uh, on the day of December 26th. So don't wait. Head over to sunsetlakesabade.com. Take advantage of this deal and grab yourself some new functional mushroom gummies. See their website for terms and conditions. And now... For the show. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar, where every day is casual Friday. That means Monday is casual Monday, Tuesday, casual Tuesday, Wednesday, casual hump day, Thursday, casual Thurs, that's what we call it, and Friday, casual Shabbat. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. It is Friday. December 22nd, 2023. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. It is the final live show of the year. Joining us today, Heather Parton. You may know her as Digby from the Uber blog Hullabaloo. Meanwhile, Washington Post reports their investigation has found no command center under the Al-Shifa hospital. And the New York Times investigation finds Israel repeatedly bombed with massive 2,000-pound bombs supposed safe areas in Gaza. <sighs> Meanwhile, at the UN, U.S. signs off on a sternly worded manager to the uh, letter to the manager in lieu of a call for ceasefire. Joe Biden pardons thousands of people convicted for federal pot possession. New polling shows student debt may be kneecapping Biden. Meanwhile, the Fed's favorite measure of inflation is now below 2%. And 
And a new recording shows that, uh, or shows, hears, presents that Trump pressured Wayne County, Michigan uh, election workers not to certify the election. (laughs) Sounds like he may have called just about everybody. Speaking of which, Rudy Giuliani files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy after a judge says Rudy must pay $148 million now. Columbia College adjunct strike. We spoke to a strike representative uh, there last week. This week? Last week? Well, the strike is over. Union wins a lot of its demands. Woohoo. Wells Fargo, New Mexico branch. Vote for, to unionize. I think it's the first in the country. All this and more on today's Majority Report. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, Casual Friday. Casual Friday. And, I mean, final, so casual. Final live show of the year. Final live show of the year. We've got, uh, we've all set up our best ofs. You're going to love those. That compilation that we've made there. Uh, the best ofs. Oh, here, I'm going to shift over here for a moment, if you don't mind, folks. Let me there just, we go. There we go. A little better. All right, centered. Nice. Um, here we are. I mentioned uh, in the uh, ad read that I'm going to be traveling uh, this week. Which You're getting um, on a plane? I'm getting on a plane, yes. Going halfway, I don't know, three quarters of the way across the country. You just get to stick around uh, oh, here, yeah. right? I'm, I'm, all my family is kind of in like a two-hour radius here, so I'm making I'm making the rounds. Uh, three families in like four days, but and I don't have to. And you get to see your fiance's family, too. Yes, so, right? yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Our parents are divorced and then his family, so... Um, uh, we're doing we're doing everything. We're doing everything. So pray for me. Well, uh, well, I at the <laughs> at the Christmas I'm going to. I think there actually might be some of that. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different for me. Oh, oh, interesting. Yes, I don't generally uh, celebrate Christmas, and so I'm. Uh, Are you uh, bringing your war uh, weapons of war uh, all, all my to guns. wage? Oh yeah, no. Well, I may have to. Uh, no, the gummies are your yeah. The, yeah. Your, the gummies no, I are may your, have to, uh, your shield. I may have to sheath uh, all of the weapons uh, under my war on Christmas. <laughs> Temporary uh, I, humanitarian pause. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but I'm not freaking out. No, no. Anyways, uh, folks, let's uh, let's get into this. The um, we're still in the uh, wake and. Uh, uh, as you know, on January 4th, um, the Supreme Court will have picked up this uh, case involving Donald Trump's um, being booted, or n- uh, rather not being booted, made ineligible. And this is uh, maybe a distinction without a difference in terms of in practice. But it is basically saying that um, the theory being that you need to qualify for the ballot you need to have, you know, you need to not be under 35 years old. You need to not have participated in an insurrection against the country. You need to be a native born member, uh, a, a citizen of the country. These are all just constitutional provisions uh, that have been uh, set up. And um, the Supreme Court will t- uh, take this up. Let's uh, 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 listen to this. Now, when, when I had talked about this ruling the other day, I think we all agree the Supreme Court is going to overturn this. Yeah. Um, and um, I think people ha- can have different uh, perspectives on, on a, as a political matter, uh, w- what should happen. As, you know, as a legal matter, it ends up uh, being a decision that the Supreme Court is going to make. Uh, um, at the time, I thought that um, I, I have a theory as to how they're going to do it. But mm. we will we will let's hear um, Marjorie Taylor Greene on with Newsmax Eric Bowling. Um, this is they're making political hay out of this for Donald Trump, which is to be expected. Certainly not a reason not to uh, pursue the the letter of the law we're talking about the 14th amendment third uh, paragraph or i should say article three of the 14th amendment uh but here is uh, marjorie taylor green 
Well, it is insane. And that's what everybody is calling it. Absolutely insane. But Eric, let's be honest. If the left, if the Democrats want to start making these rules, well, guess what? We can use the same exact rules. For example, we could take Joe Biden off the ballot in red states and other states because he is committing treason with his border policies and the invasion has gotten so bad at the southern border. We could also take his name off the ballot uh, because of the impeachment inquiry that we've been doing on the Oversight Committee, and we produced evidence that Joe Biden has definitely participated in Hunter Biden's business deals with foreign countries and sold his power for political favors. And he's received the financial benefit from that because we have the checks. And, and so I'm a big believer if the left wants to make new rules, well, we should make them live and play by their own rules. Yeah, it, it now, um, well, one of the obvious problems about this is that the... Um, the left isn't making any new rules. There is a constitution. The um, framers of uh, the constitution at one point in the wake of, uh, of the Civil War added uh, some amendments to the constitution. And one of them happens to be the 14th Amendment. And, and it was in direct response uh, to the Civil War where... People serving and fighting for the Confederacy were considered insurrectionists. Right. And um, folks at that time both didn't want them to run for these positions. Um, and by folks, I mean, you know, lawmakers. And they decided to pass this. And they assumed, like, we want to make sure that if anybody tries this again in the future, they cannot. Uh, so the, the, the weird thing is, well, obviously this is not new rules. The weird thing is that when they say, like, we can do this, they got to go through a court case. Uh, it's not like somebody, uh, you know, uh, some governor decided this is what we're going to do. It was a court. Yeah. Um, the state Supreme Court. When she mentions the impeachment, I mean, it's not the two times that Donald Trump got impeached that is preventing him, or that is feeding into this. This is through the court system. So when she talks about going after the business dealings and that he's committing treason with his right wing border policy that was very similar to what Trump did, that's completely inoperable in this instance. Well, I mean, the, it does raise an issue as to what I think the Supreme Court is going to strike down the, the uh, yeah. uh, they're, they're, I mean, they're going to be desperately looking for a way to strike this down because um, it, the, the plain reading of the 14th Amendment you know, I'm looking at they it. Now, could argue, yeah. They could argue that it doesn't mention the presidency, but it's really hard to argue that he's not an officer uh, who took an oath. Do you want me to read it? The Constitution. What, the 13th Amendment? Well, well we read it section the other day. three. Yeah, just the fact it doesn't explicitly say the president, but it does say or hold any office, civil or military. And Kowalski made a great point on the IMs that commander in chief is the top military. Yeah, I officer. mean, it, it would you'd have to do a lot of dancing around uh, to say that it, it, it the officer. I mean, it, it's not inconceivable they would say that because that's the way that they they roll. Yeah, but I also think they might have an argument where they would say, well, Donald Trump has not been convicted of being an insurrectionist. Now, I think you can look at the obvious. Uh, the, the there's obvious. Uh, evidence we were talking about not only you know what's coming out of wayne county now in terms of his motivation uh but we also know that there were lies told to the uh to get the permit for that uh rally and they already were aware that the president was going to pretend like he's not sending people down to uh con uh to that to uh the yeah, house to congress i mean they knew that in advance so clearly there was a plan there but the the idea of folks in uh, who fought for the confederacy being insurrectionists and i i can't point to it but um were considered i would imagine statutorily if you took up arms against the union at that time you were involved in an insurrection that was a blanket proclamation so there was some statutory basis to say here's the evidence that you were in the uh, uh the the confederate army you were an insurrectionist. It has been a failure of Merrick Garland, in my estimation. Yeah. And uh, we see this now with uh, Jack Smith. To charge him with insurrection. Because how do you establish that he was in insurrection? So I have a feeling the Supreme Court's going to go, 
the issue is there's no way to no one's attempted to establish that he specifically is an insurrectionist we've had people go to jail for participating in that insurrection many many people donald trump is not one of them mm -hmm. he has not stood trial and he's no charges currently about the insurrection and so i think that's where they're going to come off it but um but it, is that could you make a legal case that if you know the jack smith trial goes through and donald trump is convicted of something isn't that, that, that on the documents though yeah it is on, oh, oh the the that's on the do, oh, the jack smith one's on, no no the, the january 6th one is the jack smith one right the federal january 6th one if i don't I'm know mistaken. maybe if he's convicted i don't know i i, I but he's not charged with insurrection understood in that case. but i think that that would be more of an opening right because it's related to the insurrection i, I don't know i they don't have know. to wait and see but what the, the outcome of that case the, would be either yeah, way the, the, the conservative textualists are going to try to make this like the most kind of narrow reading possible of this obviously it should be uh interesting and you know as a political matter maybe that's a different thing maybe we'll talk to to uh digby about that uh, and we will get to Digby in just a moment. First, another couple of words of our sponsors. I used this uh, this morning. What is it? Things look pretty uh, pretty smooth neat right up here. there. Yeah. yeah, no stray hairs. Nope, that's because one of our sponsors is Henson Shaving. Mm. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station, Mars Rover, and now they're bringing their precision engineering to your shaving experience. Uh, back when um, I grew a beard, uh, I was like, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna have a subscription shaver. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. And uh, Henson Shaving came around and I'm like, I'm gonna check this out. This is the best razor, A, that I have ever owned. In fact, actually, this is not the one that I own. The one I own is at home and it's black. That's the one my fiance owns, the silver one. I, well, I have the. I see it every morning. I have the black one, and this is. Uh, it's a great razor for a multitude of reasons, and I honestly think that, like, I mean, aside from the fact that they are an engineering company, they use um, computer numerical control machines to develop this. Uh, I really don't think that you uh, you could do this unless you were Canadian. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because once you buy this razor which has these channels to evacuate uh, your, uh, your shaving cream and whatnot. Once you buy this razor, it costs you three to five dollars a year for the rest of your life mm -hmm. to maintain uh, this as a, an amazing shave. Because uh, it uses the non-proprietary, you know, uh, double-edged uh, razor blades that you can buy anywhere. Um, you put it in, you drop it in, it is a great shave. And why is it such a great shave? Well, it turns out the reason why your other shavers are no good, it, and you don't need 15 blades on these things to do it, the reason why they are rough or they scratch you or whatever it is, it's because of the distance of the blade from the razor, like a diving board. And um, the longer it is, and we're talking, you know, tiny, tiny amounts, uh, the more it wobbles and the less it sort of like keeps straight, et cetera, et cetera. With their uh, engineering, you know, that made a space station stuff, um, they make metal razors that extend just 0. 0.0013 inches, less than the thickness of a human hair. It means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. And again, they have the channels to do the thing so you don't have to bang it uh, on your sink. Um it is the best razor. It's pretty Not great. the best razor business, because again, three to five bucks a year. Once you buy this, and it's a beautiful razor, it would make a great gift. Um, and you use standard dual edge uh, razors, and now they're giving our audience a two-year free supply of bla braids, uh, blades for free. Just go to hensonshaving.com slash majority. That's H-E-N-S-O-N shaving.com slash majority add your razor and then you have to put the hundred pack of blades into your card enter the code majority get the blades for free the link is in the description best shave you'll ever have promise you that uh check it out also um great gift you can be late with that gift and you may even still be able to have time to get it there before christmas or right after 
Um, when you give someone a gift, you want them to be able to take it out of the box and enjoy it right away. Well, uh, Aura Frames allows your uh, sort of more, how can I put this delicately, um, technologically uh, challenged mm -hmm. parents or grandparents or even, you know, uh, brothers or sisters or uh, cousins uh, or aunts or uncles um, to enjoy a digital frame. This is a, um, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful frame. But the amazing thing about it is, is that you can load all of the pictures onto the frame. You don't even need to have the box with you. You can order it online, get the code, go directly to the frame, load it all up. You can even um, install the, the Wi-Fi stuff. So uh, you preset the Wi-Fi on the frame. Wow. And it will uh, find the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi and the password. It'll... So all you got to do is plug it in. It is, um, it's a revelation. You can have the box with you and you look on, on the code or you look at the QR code or you can get it uh, when you order it. I mean, it's, so what you could do is send the, the frame, even if it's late for, for Christmas, you take pictures of everybody, open up their presents, bing, they plug it in, all the pictures show up. It is the perfect gift for this holiday. Visit AuraFrames.com slash majority today. Get $30 off their best seller in frames. It's frames sell out quickly. Get yours right now before they're gone. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash majority. Use the promo code majority. You'll get $30 off their best selling frame. Terms and conditions apply. We will put the link in the podcast and YouTube description. Uh, now we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Heather Parton. You may know her as the columnist at, uh, at salon.com or uh, the uh, Uber blogger at the Uber blog hullabaloo as Digby. We'll be right back. And for the last time in 2023, there it is. Heather Parton's theme song, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Digby, uh, so great to have you on the final day of uh, 2023. Um, we've been talking on, I don't know, I don't know how long we've been doing on this show. For 12 years on this show, maybe... 13 years, I don't know, 14 years least, uh, yeah. in Air America. I don't know. We've been at this for, for quite a while. Um, and and um, this year, we were, uh, uh, Em and I were just like coming up with a list of stuff that happened this year. The, uh, uh, the East Palestine rail disaster. I mean, it feels like that uh, was four years ago. It was in February. <laughs> we had the uh, uh, Twitter Can files. Really? We had all the uh, Donald Trump indictments. We had Ron DeSantis go from uh, hero to goat, but 
Uh, no, not not even like most kids think of goat as greatest of all time. Well, I was going to say hero to greatest, zero, greatest of all time, <laughs> uh, sort of lead balloon, as it were. <laughs> yeah, I mean rivaling uh, Scott Walker, and yeah. um, we've had uh, the Republicans essentially fall apart and have to replace their uh, speaker with a um, a uh, a theocrat. And we should say one of the least productive Congresses in the history of Congress it passed like 23 bills or something. Um, Ukraine, obviously, um, obviously uh, the uh, 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 Hamas attack on Israel and then Israel's subsequent um, sort of onslaught uh, and really attempted at the very least ethnic cleansing uh of of gaza we don't know how that ends up but you know new report in the washington post today uh that uh netanyahu's been lobbying biden macron um uh who else in, trudeau, in, in trudeau uh, maybe in in britain i can't re recall off the top of my head um sunak. sunak to uh to essentially force egypt to take uh hundreds of thousands of palestinians um <laughs> And then, you know, we're looking at uh, Joe Biden almost like uh, breaking records for uh, a disapproval uh, rating. We've also had half a dozen, almost five, I think, uh, uh, interest rate increases, uh, you know, exacerbating a housing crisis in this country. Um, I don't know what we should start with. Why don't we just start? With the most recent and then go backwards because this also has to do with going forward uh donald trump booted off the ballot in colorado that decision has been stayed until january 4th uh or it will be further stayed until the supreme court looks at it what's your perspective on that i mean aside from the fact that i think we all know the supreme court is going to um overturn this case do you think they should I mean, do you think that some people out there say it should be 9-0 um, in terms of a, uh, a ruling? What, what, what is your perspective on that? Well, it's, you know, it's actually tougher than I thought it would be, because to me, you know, when I first read about this, you know, they had the there was an op ed written by Lor Professor Lawrence Tribe and former, um, you know, appellate court judge Michael Luddig. A, a liberal and a conservative, you know, both very, you know, highly regarded, suggesting that this was not just suggesting, asserting that this was, uh, you know, a proper reading of the 14th Amendment and that Trump should be barred from running for office again. And when I read that, I thought, well, that makes sense to me. It was seems perfectly obvious. And to me, uh, you know, I don't think there's any question that he was involved and participated in the insurrection on January 6th. And in fact, he incited it and and was basically one of the, the architects of the of the insurrection. So, you know, I don't, you know, I, I on a, on the merits of it, I, I can't see how anybody could read it otherwise that it he didn't he isn't disqualified the same way anyone would be if they you know didn't meet the requirements and this obviously he doesn't meet the requirements having said that though you know i am persuaded by certain people that i respect like you know steve vladek uh law professor from texas i mean there are a number of them who said you know we, you know maybe not there are some there are a number of unsettled issues regarding this. It's, you know, there are a number of off ramps that are available to the Supreme Court to take that actually aren't egregious and they possibly could do it. I don't know about 9 0, that seems like a bit much. But nonetheless, uh, I'm persuaded that it's not as much of a slam dunk as I had thought. And on the political side, you know, there are a number of ways to, um, you know, that, that I think that, that we should. That Trump should be barred from office. That being one of them, I think a convicted felon, which he may very well be by the time the election comes along next year. He, I don't think convicted felons should probably be allowed. They can't even vote. So how can he be president? And finally, <laughs> hopefully, the uh, the the you know the voters will turn him out. But you know, I the the ramifications of the court deciding to take him off the ballot. Uh, you know, it's really kind of unknowable. And I got to be honest, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of us always having to worry about, oh, no, what are the Trump people going to do? They're going to rise up. They're going to be upset. And then and then what will happen? You know, it's like every single issue that comes up with him 
including the indictments and everything else, it's like, well, we better, you know, better appease Don because you know what happens if we, if he doesn't get his way, then every, all hell's going to break loose. And I'm kind of tired of that. So, you know, I, whatever happens with it, I'm, uh, you know, I'm fine. I think that it's perfectly legit and, you know, go for it. If it doesn't work, there are a number of other avenues that we can, you know, hopefully take to uh, take Donald Trump out of the political picture once and for all. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. In fact, I think um, uh, doing this to appease even 50, 60 percent of the country or 40 percent of the country, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, ignoring the law to appease a certain amount of uh, of people in this respect, I think it is absurd. Uh, and frankly, like, you know, I'm, I, uh, Donald Trump might be the best candidate for Joe Biden to run against frankly so it's there not you that? know yeah that I, it but i do think that um you know you got to follow the law and because the when you don't it becomes problematic down the road I and mean, we've seen this many many times particularly with abuse of power uh, issues um you know i don't know if uh, vladic pointed out that that question of like there's been no formal assessment as to whether he was an insurrectionist I have no doubt about it, right? But we've well, had that formal assessment of individual insurrectionists who've gone to jail. I mean, some people have gone to jail for for years and years uh, because of what they did on that day, and so he's never been found guilty of that, which I think is a failure, frankly, on the uh, a part of uh, the Department of Justice and and this and that. But um, yeah, as the political fallout, I, I just don't think like yeah, people would have been upset if. Uh, Ollie North went to prison for uh, Iran Contra, but he should have. Uh, maybe people would have been upset well, if, if Nixon had gone to jail, but he should have. Um, well, they were upset that he didn't win the last election and they staged an insurrection because of exactly. it. I mean, they're upset. You know, they just get upset. They, and they'll be upset, by the way, if he loses the election. They'll be upset if he is convicted. They're, they're, they're going to be upset unless they get exactly what they want. And even then, by the way, they're going to be upset anyway because they're upset. They were upset when Donald Trump won in 2016. I don't know if you remember all the people running around screaming and starting fights and, you know, screaming Donald Trump on airplanes and calling people Hillary bitches. And I mean, they were horrible. I wrote a big piece about it. You know, it's like it's not enough for them to win. They, they, they need to, you know, just grind it, you know, their enemies to dust uh, in, in any case. So, you know, there's no margin in trying to appease these people because they're unappeasable. So, you know, you just go with what, the, try to do the right thing. Now, having said that, though, I don't know if this court, you know, I have a, I have a theory or not, it's not really a theory, a, you know, a possibility, I've written about a possibility. There are a number of ways this could go. This case, I think the likely case is that they're going to overturn it. I agree with you uh, for all those reasons. And there are so many logical off ramps for them to take so that they don't have to make, the, you know, the tough decision on this one. And there are other ones that are out there. And, you know, of course, there's this one with Trump and immunity. Um, right. And and that is, you know, th I mean, to me, that's the dicey one and maybe the most important, because if they grant a president immunity from anything he does during office during during his time in office his or her time in office and then they're immune thereafter we basically have you know a get out of jail free card for anything and and that's absolutely insane and especially since we've had demonstrated now over and over again that impeachment is a very very um well it's a it's it's a useless uh, you know, sort of operation in a time of highly polarized two parties. So it, it's not going to work. And so it, if there's no criminal, you know, um, liability for anybody, then we have a real, real problem. So hopefully they don't do that. But then there's this other case, which applies to what you were talking about, the, all these people who've gone to jail. This is the Fisher case. One of the, the people who've been convicted of obstructing uh, an official proceeding is one of the charges. And there have been hundreds of people convicted of that. They've taken the Supreme Court's taken that up. And I have a sneaking suspicion they're going to use that either to delay or, you know, to put a stay on the January 6th case, the special prosecutor Jack Smith's case. And say, well, you know, we really I think this went over and delay that case beyond the point where it would be reasonable to hold the trial, perhaps until after the election. Right. Or they're going to go ahead and decide it and say that this doesn't apply, that that law was misapplied in all those cases. And 
two of Donald Trump's charges are on those on those those same charges. So those would be withdrawn completely. And that would leave Jack Smith with a couple of other charges, fraud against the United States, another one. Oh, oh Heather. We... Heather. Deep state. There you go. Deep state. Silencing. All right, we just lost Heather, and we will uh, try and get her back on. Bear Quick with break. us, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, continue, Heather. Sorry, folks. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, no, I was just going to say that the 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 January sixth case to me, it's the most important one. It's the one that presents. I mean, actually, the the one in Florida, the the doc documents case should be, but it's not because it's got a judge there that's you know obviously going to delay it till after the election. But this January sixth case is super super important, and I see the court maybe taking some steps that could end up either upending the case altogether or delaying it beyond a point where it's going to make a difference. And that's really too bad because that's the one I think that really should, uh, you know, be pursued before the election. And in fact, you know, they, right now they're talking about, you know, they, the uh, special prosecutor wants the Supreme Court to jump in and decide right. what, at least on the immunity case. They want him to decide right away. And Trump, of course, is saying this is ridiculous. There's no hurry, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we'll have to I'm I'm kind of crossing my fingers on this because I think it's super important that they get that done. I mean, I, one way or the other. All right. Well, let's um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump on uh, across the uh, ledger here since we're talking about the uh, presidential campaign. And it, and, and it w you know, we'll have a better sense in a, in a couple of weeks as to just how dead um, Ron DeSantis and uh, uh, campaign is and uh, Nikki Haley's campaign will have a sense of just how dead they are. I mean, I it, it is hard to imagine that if neither one of them wins uh, Iowa or New Hampshire, which, you know, it looks like there's a 99 percent chance they won't. Uh, but, you know, we've been in a 99 percent chance scenario before and we've seen this. But if they if if DeSantis loses in Iowa which I think he's going to, uh, oh, and Haley Nikki Haley's loses tied in, in, in New Hampshire. In, in, in Iowa, right? And Nikki Haley's ahead of him in New Hampshire, right. if I'm not but mistaken. But either way, they're going to drop out. Yeah. I mean, or at least DeSantis will. Uh, I, I can't imagine him staying. Nikki Haley could stay in longer because she has that Coke money. Um, but let's uh, look across the ledger at, uh, at, at Joe Biden. Uh, we mentioned his uh, approval rating. I guess it ticked up two points. But I think it's going to take more than that um, uh, going forward. Um, his numbers with uh, young people, there's just a poll that came out uh, today. I think it was a YouGov one that said uh, they're pretty good, um, but not in the numbers that it was in 2020. A lot of those people seem to be going to vote for third party, maybe five or 10 percent. That could be a problem. Um where are we in terms of this? Like, I, I, you know, uh, Joe Biden does not seem to have at times like the vim and vigor to go out and, you know, sort of r campaign, you know, from behind. Although as a president, you don't need to go out. Right. I mean, this has been a strategy. A lot of presidents are basically doing like a, uh, a White House run and this and that. And, you know, it's. We haven't seen uh, Donald Trump on the campaign trail in the way that we have in the past. And it's almost like people have forgotten who he is. But what is your sense of, of how this is going to shake out? I mean, the biggest thing, it seems to be, to be some of those third party things. And there was a story today where um, the uh, no labels people are trying to sort of come up with a strategy where they could take where they would get into some type of coalition government if they take enough uh, electoral uh, college votes. And I should also say, 
for whatever reason, Joe Manchin came out with a student um, debt legislation that really just fixes the website so that you can see your, uh, you know, how much you owe. But uh, you know, that's the kind of move that. Uh, so, what what is your sense on this? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna inject a little hopium here at the end of the year because I, you know, I feel like we need it. There's an awful lot of bad news on this particular subject, or at least sort of doom and gloom on it. And um, I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the opposite tack. Uh, I agree with you absolutely, and I do think just getting out of the way, this third-party threat is the most important thing. For it's the most important impediment to uh, Joe Biden's chances. Is if no, and it's not just no labels. It could also be RFK Jr. He, you know, who knows? Jill Stein is out there, and you've got Cornell West too. And depending yep. on where they all wind up on the ballot, that that's a very dangerous place to be. And they're doing polling that shows that these third parties across the board do pull more from Biden than they pull from Trump. So, you know, this idea on no labels, which seems to be thinking, well, you know, we'll put up Joe Manchin, and then that'll give Republicans a chance to vote for somebody other than Trump that they like, that's not how it works out. I mean, Trump is Trump, Republicans are Republicans. You're dealing with that party and that's just what you have to have to do. So, you know, th there was a big meeting the other day, apparently, among a bunch of Democratic um, inter activist groups like Move On and, and, and actually Third Way, which has come out as being the big antagonist for, for no labels, which is kind of funny to me. But yeah. hey, you know, t I'll take it. It's fine if they want to put some some energy toward that. Um, and they were all saying that their main that, that you know, that they believe it's a big grift and it is no labels is a big grift. They're taking tons and tons of money from people who, sh you know, apparently have money to burn. But um, they they sa said in this meeting, apparently, I think this was reported in Semaphore, um, that um, they're going they're going to the candidates, the potential candidates like Liz Cheney or um, you know Manchin or any of the others, and saying, you know, look, don't do this. You're gonna you're gonna get Trump elected. Do not run, you know, third party. And in fact, they got a quote from somebody who was apparently on the inside of the Manchin, you know, his you know insider group, saying that he wasn't gonna do it. They came out afterwards and said. Oh, he hasn't made any decisions. Right. But, uh, you know, but, you know. And they, Cheney, they, Cheney was yeah, just saying that she was just saying that to sell her books. Now that her yeah, book is on the top, not, yeah. she's, yeah, she's not. I mean, she's. Not, I mean, and what good would that do? I mean, I, you know, it's like, who, what Republican, absurd. they're not going to vote for her. No. So, what, and anything, it might hurt Biden. I mean, I could see of course. some, you know, of little old ladies going, oh, well, I like that Liz Cheney. What a nice girl, you know, yeah. I'm voting for her. So that, you know, it's not going to help. So in any case, there is a lot of activity on this and people are, you know, definitely worried about it. So just getting that out of the way. I honestly think that if when people start looking at the way Donald Trump is campaigning, and I see no reason to believe that he's going to change, he's nuttier than he was before. He is, he's always been nuts. We know that. We all watched him, you know, tell people to drink bleach and what have you. But I do think that this new authoritarian, um, you know, let's say it, you know, Nazi, Hitler-esque, fascist rhetoric of his, I do think it's, I think it Hitler has- Hitler copied me. I came up with the whole thing myself. <laughs> I haven't even read he Mein Kampf. copied Mein Kampf. me. I never read Mein Kampf. <laughs> Which is funny because he's never read anything. So it right, like, doesn't really say I, too much. I believe it. Yeah, I, I totally believe he hasn't read Mein Kampf because he has yeah. never read anything. Um, but, you know, I do believe that he's a natural born fascist. You know, he doesn't need to read it. He, he lives it. He, you know, he, it, it, it's in his, in his DNA. And he'll say it's in his DNA because he loves to talk about how he loves his good German blood. So, you know, this is Ugh. this is the guy that we're talking about. And I, I do think is what you said, Sam, that they people have forgotten, you know, who he is. And I think when they're reminded of it, it's going to make a difference. Having, you know, so that's Trump that and he is going to be the nominee. I think we can all agree it would take, you know, he's got to fall over on the golf course or at the omelet bar at Mar-a-Lago and have a heart attack or something for him not to be the nominee. I, and, and that's really what Nikki and, and Ron DeSantis have been playing with. But I do think these economic numbers, I think they're going, they're starting to make a difference. You're seeing, you're seeing uh, rises in consumer confidence. Interest rates are coming down. 
inflation is coming down, mortgage rates have, you know, dropped substantially and that's, you know, all this stuff. And then, you know, that with the Fed. Have mortgage rates dropped? Yes. Recently? Just happened this week. Yeah. Oh, I just didn't, happened I didn't this know week. Yeah. Okay. And that must um, be an in anticipation yeah, right. of the Fed right. dropping rates going forward. Exactly. And then you've got rents. Also another big story that rents have stabilized and are starting to come down. You're starting to see an economy that is improving in a way. Now, I'm older than you guys both. And I, I went through the early 80s when this whole thing, you know, when we went through the Ronald Reagan's first term. And I was an adult at that time. So, I, you know, I remember this. And it was like people were, you can't imagine the horror of what the economy was like then. I mean, it was, they called it the misery index. It was high unemployment and high inflation all at the same time. It was horrible, which is something we were anticipating that was going to happen in this case when the Fed was raising interest rates and we thought, oh my God, we're going to have a recession. Severe. Unemployment's going to happen. Didn't happen. So it looks like we've got a soft landing. But in the 80s, Going into that election in 1984, which I found very, very closely, and everybody assumed that Reagan was dead. They really did. Um, and it was because it was so bad. I mean, the, the, the pain of what and Reagan had, he had, you know, taken out the, the flight, uh, you know, the, the FAA, Pat Co, the union, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the union, the flight, uh, what, are, what are they called? The, uh, the <laughs> air, air, air traffic, traffic controllers. controllers. Yeah. Union. And, and he had taken that out. I mean, everybody was just, you know, it was like, whoa, this is terrible. And then suddenly, as people started to feel it, things came around. And of course, they had the famous ad, Morning in Morning America. In America. And it, was a lands yeah. Yeah, it was a landslide victory. I'm not comparing it. We're in a different time. Donald Trump is a very different kind of person. We're dealing with, you know, a Democrat in the White House instead of a Republican, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just saying that I have seen it happen where you can go from this really miserable doom and gloom feeling about the economy. And of course, we have the hangover from the pandemic, which I think has really been affecting people's, you know, vibe, if you want to call it that. I do think I sense that that's changing. So that's my hopium is that I think that between seeing Donald Trump and what he is, and and the economy improving, I think that Biden doesn't have to do a whole lot. I, it's like you say, he can do like a more Rose Garden strategy, get out there and, you know, make speeches and have other people out there doing the hardcore anti-Trump campaigning, which I hope that the Democrats get on. They need to do that. And I think that the, I think that he'll eke out a victory. I think, I, you know, this, all things being equal, I think he should. And a lot depends on, you know, I'm very worried about what's happening with the uh, with the Israel and Gaza situation because that's very volatile. And everybody, even the war hawks in the Congress, are now saying, come on, you know, this is ridiculous. you got to do something. So that could, you know, you never know how events are going to affect things. But just from my perspective, I think he's uh, in better shape than most people think. That's my feeling. Do, do you think that he needs to start, though, running with a message now a little bit, even though, like, the primary process hasn't even begun? Absolutely. because. I'm, I've been bandying this idea uh, about in my head about how Biden really because like, yes, rental prices are beginning to tick down. But, you know, homelessness went up 12 percent. And I think it's one of the highest homelessness rates that we've seen in years. There's a housing shortage. There's I mean, a there housing, just yeah. simply is. We haven't built housing. Housing. This has been building for 10 really since the financial mm -hmm. crisis. So so my my idea is I really think Biden should run on a national housing initiative on rental prices, on building more housing, potentially repealing the fair cloth amendment in order to get more subsidized housing built although that's I'm sure a little bit too liberal for his taste. But I mean, that's the kind of thing that could really appeal to younger voters who are feeling pretty despondent about the student debt promise kind of falling through. And part of that's the Supreme Court. Part of that, I think, is a failed strategy of Biden and not going more aggressively on that front. But housing is the other thing in rental prices that affects you know, my generation. What do you think of that idea as something that he could emphasize a bit? I think it's a fabulous idea. I think it's absolutely a fabulous idea. That's one of the things that has, and it's not just not just young people. I mean, it's like everybody, right? You know, who are who are. I mean, if you're a homeowner and you're old, you know, if you're my age and you know you've got a lot of equity in your house, things are looking pretty good, right? You know, you can sell out and you know to some speculator somewhere, and you've got a nice tidy nest egg. But for anybody else. It's, it's a problem across the board. So uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And it also tied, would tie in perfectly with his, 
you know, his emphasis on infrastructure, right? Because he's been, in fact, there is a lot of, of, home building is way up all you know just over the last six months suddenly we're starting to see housing really ticking up um at new home new you know new housing and i notice here in this because i live in the city you guys live in the city i'm sure you're noticing that there's a lot of of i mean you know, uh, they've been building buildings here for like the past 10 years it's been like it's the, <laughs> yeah our audience gets to hear by. the lovely noises outside <laughs> yeah. of our uh, office. That, but that's been going on for a long time. I mean, it's really, we're talking about housing all across the country, you know, maybe outside of, uh, of different cities. Um, we lost Heather again. Hmm. What's going on uh, with this end of year? How about when we talk about infrastructure, uh, we start to provide better internet for uh, for Heather Parton. That would be nice. Uh, and Digby, we'll, we'll start with there. Or, I mean, she's in... Um, in the city, do we have her? Uh, let's see if not we can quite get her yet. Back on. She's coming back in. She's coming back in. But yeah, I mean, I, 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 there's a lot of ways that Biden could put that to the forefront of his campaign and have a message that isn't just a redux of once again, I'm not Trump. And now we have Heather back. Yeah, Here Heather, we, we were just saying in terms of infrastructure, we got to get uh, uh, improvement on your uh, your internet. But. Uh, storms going on that's ah, why okay. so, yeah, ah. yeah. um sorry, well sorry I, I mean let's just one more let's just touch on one thing i mean there's some uh uh polling out there that uh was uh uh done and i, I think it was ari rabenhoff uh, just uh, wrote a piece about it in the intercept that um showed if you look at the cohorts of people who voted for biden and for uh trump under the age of 45 i think it is at this point there's been a shift that, and it's, again, causal, it's very difficult, but there's a correlation between those people who have student debt and mm -hmm. voted for Biden in 2020, who have student debt, are less likely to vote for Biden now. And there's speculation that, and again, very tough to, to assess this, but there's speculation that the idea of, like, anticipation of getting student debt relief having the moratorium because of covid operating under those uh, past four years mm -hmm. three years uh anticipating a, a relief of student debt has left people feeling like you know they were counting on that already it was like you know their 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 eggs the the they counted their eggs and now some of their eggs have been taken away from them or the anticipation of having those eggs they you know uh were taken away um there's there's counter arguments to that but i think there's um but i don't i don't uh, frankly i think there there's something to that um the, uh, biden has, has provided uh, debt relief for about 3 million of the 42 million uh who are in uh, debt but they tend to be older than 45 because of the nature of that debt it's mm -hmm. if you've paid for 20 years and uh if you you still haven't paid off your bill or um et cetera, et cetera. And so, I mean, the, there's a real sense out there that maybe, um, you know, I don't know what he could do, uh, other than the process that they already are, are you know, engaging in because the Supreme court, uh, inhibited and it, it wasn't, uh, voted upon, uh, by, by Congress, but it does feel like there needs to be something that, uh, that Biden, you know, is out there campaigning on and, uh, they, they seem to be sort of without a message at the moment. Well, I think, you know, honestly, I think one of the things they need to do, and it doesn't have to come from Biden himself. I mean, part of this is, and I'm, I, I saw a thing the other day, it was one of those bulwark guys, um, Tim Miller was talking about how he was at some event and he started talking to, uh, and he said, you know, a person in the cabinet who is very, very good on television, you know, he was being funny, you know, very, very good on television and, when, and he likes to talk about potholes and transportation. So of course he's talking about Pete Buttigieg, right? Who is very good on television, right? He's just, he's a very effective messenger. He said, why is it, why don't they have, you know, those people out there talking about you know not just accomplishments by the biden administration i mean they you know they do that but also things like explanatory politics which you know somebody like bill clinton was really good at where you go out there and you talk about 
why things are the way they are. What happened here? What what went on that made this made this happen? The student loan story is a really really great way for for the administration to say, look, you know, the, here are here we want to do this. We wanted to do it. We got these are the roadblocks that we came up against. And I know people don't want to hear excuses, but it's you know it's very difficult to understand why things are so gridlock and why things are so difficult and why it's always pulling teeth and why promises like that are not um, easily fulfilled. And they need to have people out there, and Biden's not good at this, so it shouldn't be him, but somebody like Buttigieg or others, there are others. Buttigieg was against uh, student debt relief. I mean, well, that is, uh, yeah, maybe that's why he can't say anything. Right. Maybe not him. Or maybe he's changed his mind. Let's just, let's have a positive sort of, he's changed and he can be out there talking about. But in any case, my, my point is, is that it's just, there people don't understand really what happened. And I, so I don't blame them for being, disappointed and upset and feeling like there was no, you know, like, you know, they were promised something that they didn't get. Um, you know, it, it, I think it's fair to, to, for them to feel that way, but somebody, they have to, you know, somebody has got to tell them what happened. And I don't think they have. Well, my, my frustration is just that, and I agree with you that there, you know, we have to, there has to be messaging, but the, the Biden administration fell on its face from the beginning with this because they sent out letters to people and said, we're going to cancel your debt um, and just did this long wind up where they had three or four months of let's look into the legality of it and just said, here you go, conservative group in Missouri or wherever they made that bogus claim about harm, uh, financial harm, which ended up being proven. Actually, they would benefit uh, this Missouri uh, uh, basically kind of. Well, staging. it wasn't. I mean, just to be clear, yeah. there was a Missouri. Um, uh, entity that uh, serviced loans for the state, and they weren't the ones who brought this. The, the, the suit. Right, Missouri it was actually did the state on their Missouri behalf. Did on their behalf, yes. even though that agency said, "No, we don't want you to do this." No, you're right to clarify that. But my point is just like Biden gave them literally saying, "Like here, it, you know, I'm I'm going to drive down the field. I'm going to call a slant. I'm going to call a run play. I'm going to call a deep pass down the middle." And here you go. And uh, defense, there you go. This is my this is my plan for to, to get into the end zone. And I just I, I, I'm I'm still so flummoxed by that choice. And it really has hurt him, I think, overall, because when these young people got that letter, they thought it was happening. And I don't understand the strategy of doing that first. We, um, I don't either. That's totally. a very odd. It was yeah. a very that's a very odd thing to do unless you've got it in the bag. Don't you know, don't get people's hopes up. Right. And, right. and of course now they don't understand what happened. So you're sitting there with a bunch of very disappointed people and, you know, I get it. I, I, I totally get it. And I don't know what they can do now in terms of policy to change it. I mean, have you heard any, I mean, maybe I'm not following. No, the they've subject. got this, uh, you know, they, they could theoretically try and, um, I think they're, they're trying to do it maybe under a different authority, but it, that they are going through the, you know, m months and months, months long, uh, sort of like a uh, process to make sure that, uh, it's all legit. It's in, not inconceivable to me that, you know, it, it may they'll be done with this process they'll try and do it again if they uh, win re-election and then the supreme court will uh screw it up what what's going on there bradley we just had a uh, a little Heather, bit of are you problem. still there i'm here yeah, yeah. okay here. Oh, there you go yeah. sorry we we're having all sorts of technical difficulties um all right well let's let's leave that uh we'll have a, a lot of time in the next uh 11 months to talk about the the campaign and what uh, the Biden administration is or is not doing to sort of like provide a uh, a positive, a proactive agenda aside from the fact that Donald Trump is a threat to uh, democracy, which I think is, you know, I think it's a pretty good case. But sometimes, you know, people aren't uh, necessarily always moved by that. I mean, we see this. You know, it's not just in this country. You know, we, we saw what just happened in Argentina. Mm -hmm. We've seen what's going on in, uh, you know, uh, in Europe, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's talk just briefly about uh, what's happening with the Republicans in Congress. Like the other, you know, the, the one thing that I think to the extent that I do feel um, 
hopeful about is that the Democrats are going to retake uh, the House. So there will be some in the uh, worst case scenario, Donald Trump wins and the, he gets the Senate. There will be some slow to the roll. Um, it, it will be a real problem for the judiciary again, uh, which uh, is 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 an issue. It's unthinkable, Sam. He can't win again. I mean, that's just, I, it's not it's not. I think I think people I need to I need to think about it so that they, they get I mean, them but motivated. <laughs> but yeah. it is in you know the idea of Trump winning and there being a theocrat uh, as the Speaker of the House. I mean, it's one thing to have the vice president, but I don't, I don't know that the speaker isn't more powerful in the, uh, in a, with a Republican president, if the speaker isn't more powerful when you're talking about theocrats, I know that, uh, Pence was, uh, the VP. Oh, we lost it again. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Heather's, uh, well, Heather is having those thunderstorms in her area. So I feel like that's got to be something like that. Hi. Well, there she is. Here again. She's back Hi, again. I'm so sorry. I don't, you know, I can't explain it. It's just, I've got weather here, I guess. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Um, so yeah, anyways, so Mike, I mean, the Mike idea of like me. what's happening in Congress, I mean, you know, uh, I haven't seen any polling of like the 18 districts that Biden won and uh, are um, represented by Republicans, but you can see, um, you know, the Republicans getting nervous. You know, particularly the ones in New York, I notice, mm -hmm. you know, they were very excited to get rid of uh, George Santos, but they, you know, they, they've had to vote for the impeachment. I mean, I think that's going to be the sort of um, a real problem for them down the road, it seems to me. Oh, for sure. And then you've got this new ruling that, you know, the, the, the gerrymander has been is now uh, out in New York. So that should make a difference. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, really, I mean, Mike Johnson is, I mean, we really take a minute to talk about him because he, and I'm sure you have in the past here, but I'm telling you, this guy is something else. And uh, he is as dangerous in a different way as Donald Trump is. And the combination of the two of them is terrifying because he is, a, you know, he is a real theocrat. I mean, we're not talking just sort of, you know, a pretend guy who's out there, you know, going to the mega church in order to, you know, get votes. I mean, he's for real. In fact, this week, I don't know if you remember, Sam, it, it, probably close to 20 years ago, we were talking about this, and it was part of the rise of the, the, um, the you know, theocratic right uh, during the early 2000s. When they, we were talking about those purity balls, do you remember those? Oh, uh, the 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 purity balls where uh, you know um, a father takes daughter there. He uh, mar marries his daughter. Basically, she's wearing a wedding dress, and they exchange yeah. rings, and she she yep. commits herself to her father until her husband comes along. Yeah, all that. It was really you know. Let's talk grooming. Huh? I mean, that's really some sick stuff. Mike Johnson just turned up. There was some tape of him. He and his daughter did the purity ball thing, and it's on tape. You can see him doing it. Is this poor little girl, you know, as his daughter? I mean, this is what we're talking about. That is the far extreme, extreme uh, religious right, Christian nationalist, you know, the worst of the worst. And this guy is, you know, I mean, he's second in line to the presidency, extremely powerful job. And his connection there with that far right aspect of Christian nationalism is just it it's terrifying to me and when you combine that with trump and his newfound love of adolf hitler uh who you know <laughs> copied him um you know we're we're talking about the, a republican party that's gone even further than i anticipated they would be able to go and they seem to be running with it i don't see any backtracking i don't see any i mean trump came out this week and his people said you know yeah we like this poisoning the blood thing we're going to run run with it we're not he's not backing off and and so this is a very terrifying thing. And the, the only good news is, is that the Republicans in the House are so inept and so dysfunctional that they're unable to actually do much. And of course, thank God we have a Democratic Senate and then, you know, a Democrat in the, House, in the White House that stops them from actually passing any of their legislation. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, this is a, this is a very crazy time. I mean, this yep. isn't. You know, this is beyond what we've seen before. Let's just put it that way. And I think people need to really be aware of just how. Um, and Johnson you know, is very. Um, uh, he, he 
first off, he's got the whole lying for the Lord thing down. Yeah, um, he is, you know, he's, he's out there good. realizes, I mean, he realizes that the, the American public cannot be sold this, you know, uh, his agenda at the moment. I think he realizes he, the American public can never be sold the, the agenda. I don't think that's the issue. The issue, I think, is he realizes like we don't have the other branches of government. Uh, we don't have the other house. We don't have, you know, we don't have the Senate. We don't have uh, uh, the presidency. So there's, you know, keep the powder dry. Um, yeah. But yes, this guy is full on theocrat um, and and second in line to the presidency, but far more powerful it seems to me in terms of being able to actually create legislation than the vice president and so um you know yeah, uh, the vice president who cares about the vice well, president exactly. right? I, mean, I mean pence was the highest ranking theocrat that we have had in this country mm -hmm. but i really think that that mike johnson is this guy now yeah. um a lot to be sort of uh concerned about as we go into 2000 uh, 24, we're obviously going to be talking about just about all this stuff again, it seems to me. Um, I mean, we're going to enjoy, I think, uh, Ron DeSantis, uh, 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 you know, sort of whimpering away. But, it's my Christmas present to myself is to enjoy <laughs> watching Ron DeSantis disintegrate before my eyes. It's a beautiful thing. But that I think we're going to watch, I think we're going to, I mean, the, it, you know, the last thing I, I, I think, uh, you know, that it's, aside from the the presidential election being fairly ominous um i think we're going to be seeing this israel um assault i think this is this is going to be a story that's going to last well into 2024 yep. i agree um, i agree and how can it not well i i also think that you know there's reports that netanyahu and uh parts of his uh, government want to go into lebanon and we see the Houthis, uh, you know, uh, hitting uh, the, the, the Red Sea, uh, shipping. Joe Biden has yet to indicate that he's not willing to sort of like shut down what Israel is doing or attempt to. Um, and it's unclear to me that he's not like willing to stay with Netanyahu even if this thing becomes the regional conflict that supposedly they're, they are they are desperate to not have happen and and expand beyond that and from there's no indication that netanyahu wants to do anything other than to continue to have a conflict going because it's the one thing that is keeping it. him in office which mm -hmm. may be the one thing that's keeping him out of jail and mm -hmm. you know this situation where he's like where the Israeli public is like, as soon as you're done with this, you're out of office. Well, his incentive is, how do I not get, get be d done with this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have a parliamentary system where it's like, we need to put off elections because we have a major war happening on our northern front would be, you know, one yeah. of those type of situations. And Absolutely. Biden is leaking to the press in the U.S., that he wants to see a change of power. We're in a situation, and like I, I said this at the start of this, when MBS raised, you know, like uh, throttled down the production of oil with OPEC, right, ahead of the 2022 midterms because he didn't like that Biden had some tough rhetoric on him um, during the election, and then Biden fist pump bumped him, and you know, all is well or whatever. We're gonna see this times. A, like exponentially with Netanyahu, who is as Biden begins to just have tiny, tiny criticisms of the massacre in Gaza. My guess is as he ramps it up, he's going to also see this as an opportunity to hurt Biden electorally because there's nothing more that someone like Netanyahu would want than Trump to get back in office. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, and it's the same thing with with Ukraine and and uh, yeah. and Putin. Um, you know, they're, they're watching what's happening here. And both Netanyahu and Vladimir Putin see Donald Trump as being an ally. And so it works very well. For, and he is. So, you know, that he, they're not wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, this is going to be you know, the, the way that, that this is being handled by them and then by the Biden administration in response is going to have, uh, you know, an effect on the election. 
as they plan. As they plan, and that's what I'm saying. You know, we don't know what events are going to happen here that could. I mean, this this potential for a regional war, uh, and maybe worse, uh, when you consider all the hot spots all over the place. Um, you know, that's hanging out here, and we just have to hope against hope that that doesn't happen because that's that's a whole different. That's a conversation <laughs> I don't think any of us are really prepared to to contemplate at the time. Well, uh, Heather, thanks for wrapping up this year. Uh, it, it, it's been a while since we had, like, I feel like 2020, 2020 wrapping up was sort of fun. 2021, we were still a little bit hopeful because we thought that maybe this build back better could actually happen. Although I do rem recall us being like, he should have done this in June uh, right. <laughs> instead of like letting cinema and Portman walk in the door. <laughs> so I guess it's like right now we're on like maybe one for every four years. Is that the way it works? Um, that where are we, happy? Like, yeah. Where we're, uh, you know, sort of optimistic. Uh, but you, you were a little bit optimistic about the, um, the election. So that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, I try, you know, I don't, I don't want to succumb to just being so depressed that I can't get up in the morning. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and keep myself, um, you know, somewhat. T teach well, me your self care tips. is important. Teach me your tips. All right, Heather. we just lost you again. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, have a pardon. Yeah. Have a great. Uh, uh, have a have a, have a happy holiday, a Christmas, yes, if too. that is also what you happen to uh, celebrate, and a happy New Year. You too. Can't wait. We'll see you next year. Okay. <laughs> see you, Heather. Bye, Heather. Bye. All right, folks. Um, I guess, do we go to the fun half now, or do we do a freebie Friday? It would be very in much in the holiday spirit if we were to do a freebie Friday. But is, is Monday Christmas? Yes. Okay. We're not doing a show well, on Monday. Or you, uh, you could continue your war on Christmas and, and put well, I'm the not gonna fun make half it, behind the paywall. I'm not going to... Uh, that's, that's not... Um, Too many civilian that's collateral, casualties. Yeah, that's collateral damage. Um, folks, freebie Friday. Uh, but let's, uh, let's take a break, head to the fun half, but we'll leave it open for everybody. Okay. Great. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll come right back. It is a freebie Friday. Just a reminder, it is your support that makes this show possible. You can become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. When you do, you not only uh, allow this show to survive and thrive, you get the free half free of commercials. You get to, I am the show via the app. Uh, you get that discount on our merch, shop.majorityreportradio.com. Please go buy the dog collars. Yeah. It sounded like such a great idea. We've got people, people have bought them, but um, at the end, you know, within like uh, like uh, six to eight months, we own all the collars because it's not, you can't do dog collars. Apparently it's like some, you can't, you know, you get to order them, purchase them, and then that's it. And they're they're twelve bucks. I mean, you could actually even use it if like you're very, 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 very uh, thin. Maybe for your kids, uh, like a kid belt or something like that. I don't know, uh, or a headband, um, or just a you know a headband like a, with a with a buckle on it. You know, I don't I don't know what's going on these <laughs> days. Or maybe you know, uh, weightlifters can use it around their wrists and attach. Uh, I, I, there's so many uses for it. I mean, I don't understand why the dog collar has to be multi-use. I feel like there's many dogs and they all need collars. Yeah, buy the dog collar, but there's also like the whoopsie T-shirt and yes. the uh, Left Is Best. I mean, there's all sorts of great merch there. The days of the week. Uh, so check it out. Shop dot majority report radio dot com. Also, don't forget JustCoffee.coop, Fair Trade Coffee, uh, and featuring the Majority Report blend. Use uh, the coupon code Majority to get ten percent off. It's great coffee, and their prices are extremely reasonable mm. for uh, for uh, for ground co uh, nut ground. I mean, whole bean. I think you can get a ground too if you want. But um, check it out, uh, JustCoffee.coop. Um, our Discord. If you're feeling a little bit lonely for us this next week, head over to majoritydiscord.com. Over 10,000 of you 
are over there posting. Great way to uh, catch up on stuff. Um, Emma, ESVN. Well, uh, we gave our picks against the spread after my 3-0 and week. Let's see if I can keep it going. Kowalski has sent us some uh, some methods of punishment and oh my God, uh, that soda looks disgusting yes well don't don't uh don't worry one of us will be chugging it in some disgusting fashion at the end of this competition they're all on display at the bookshelf oh i see them i'm looking at them right now so thank you kowalski for that uh youtube.com slash espn show uh for that and uh we have left reckoning right for for matt uh yes um David David Griscom did the uh, the stream as Matt was traveling on Tuesday. They he spoke with um, I forgot I'm gonna get her name. One second, it's a uh, Kelly Klein Heister Camp. Uh, it, it, she is a uh, geographer PhD student at Syracuse University. Um, they were discussing uh, Germany's uh, climate nexus. Um, I just want to get her full name here. Nicole Klein Heisterkamp Gonzalez. She's a PhD student in geography at Syracuse University to discuss her research on the labor environment nexus in Germany. So uh, that was at youtube.com slash left reckoning for that, as well as uh, patreon.com slash left reckoning if you'd like more and the post game. All right, folks. Uh, we'll see all of you in the fun half today for Freebie Friday. Three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, and I don't think it's going to be the same as it looks like in six months from now, and I don't know if it's necessarily going to be better six months from now than it is three months from now, but I think around 18 months out, we're going to look back and go like, wow. What? What is that going on? It's nuts. Wait a second. Hold on. For, hold on for a second. Emma, welcome to the program. Hey. Fun. Matt. You. Fun. What is up, everyone? Fun. No, McKee. You did it. Fun. Let's Point go, there. Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Fun. Bradley, you want to say hello? Uh, sorry to disappoint everyone. I'm just a random guy. It's all the boys today. Fundamentally false. No, I'm sorry. Women. Stop. Talking oh, for wow. a second. Now let me finish. Where is this coming from, dude? But, dude, uh, you want to smoke this? Um, seven, eight. Yes. Hi, me? This me? Yes. Uh, is this me? Is it me? It is you. Is this me? Hello? Is this me? I think it is you. Who is you? No sound. Every single freaking day. What's on your mind? Sports. We can discuss free markets and we can discuss capitalism. Oh, I'm going to go start off. Who libertarians? They're so stupid, though. Common sense says, of course. Gobbledygook. We fucking nailed him! So, what's 79 plus 21? Challenge man. I'm positively quivering. I believe 96, I want to say. 857 210 35 501 for instance. $3,400, $1,900. Five, four, three trillion dollars sold. It's a zero sum game. Actually, you're making me think less. Of but, but let me say this. Poop. <laughs> you call it satire. Sam goes to satire. On top of it all, yeah. my favorite part about yeah. you is just like every day, all day, like yeah. everything you do. Without a doubt. Hey, buddy, we see you. <laughs> all right, folks, folks, folks. It's just the week being weeded out, obviously. Yeah, sun's out, guns out. I, I, I don't know. But you should know. The, People the, just don't like to entertain ideas anymore. I have a question. Who cares? Our chat is enabled, wow. folks. I love it. I do love that. Look, gotta jump. You gotta be quick. I gotta jump. I'm losing it, bro. Um, Two o'clock, we're already late, and the guy's being a dick. So screw him. Um, um, Sent to a gulag? Outrageous. Like, what is wrong with you? Love you, bye. Love you. Bye-bye. All right, folks, 646-257-3920 uh, is the number. 
The phones are on. Uh, Wanda Duck just ordered a red posit collar for my hyperactive Sheltie due to the stellar online marketing. Woo. Happy holidays to all. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, people say I don't, I'm not good at uh, marketing. Uh, six four six two five seven thirty nine twenty. Let's go right to the phones. Calling from a three zero eight area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, it is Kowalski from Nebraska. Well, Kowalski, glad to hear from you. Uh, have a great uh, New Year and a happy Christmas, or uh, however, whatever the people say. <laughs> well, we're traditionalists out here on the prairie, so it's a uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Even. Merry Christmas. Yes. Yes, so I'm calling in to, uh, you know, wish you all a well-deserved break. Thank and you. it's your call uh, for this last call of the year from myself. I have an ag report, or I will give a heartfelt message. Oh, ag report. Which would you prefer? I want, I want heartfelt message because I have the soft heart of a woman. Oh. Uh. I wanted to get a sense of which... Bradley, I guess you're the tiebreaker. All right, Bradley. Bradley. You decide. One of these people signs your checks, the other one... I don't actually sign the checks. Am I involved in... Do I have any involvement in the heartfelt message? Be honest, Kowalski. Mm, The heartfelt message is kind of just for everyone. Uh, Give us the ag report. Yeah, (laughs) baby. God. (laughs) Yeah. Come on, this is going to be important. Well, um, surprisingly enough, uh, this is probably the best position we've been at production-wise in, like, maybe 12 years. Wow. Um, As far as, like, extreme weather conditions are concerned, the Midwest (laughs) remains abnormally dry. But even with historic weather in the last three years, this year is one of the top five crops produced. And... Even with the extreme drought pressures on places like Nebraska, which relies heavily on irrigation, we haven't really damaged our groundwater supply. It still remains right where the Natural Resource Department says it should be. A lot of that has to deal with abnormally high snow melt this past year, and, you know, hoping that happens again. Um, The Southwest, they had the... uh, really been a long year but california had those immense floods back in the uh winter and it basically refilled a lot of their reservoirs their uh draw in the colorado was a bit less uh more snowpack in the mountains over the winter the colorado saw a huge increase in its water flow it's still down from what we would you know want for normal but i mean it's still considerably better than it's ever been in the last decade um then if you go south into uh, South America, they're seeing drought pressures, but it's not too extreme. Argentina's getting a bit more extreme, and they're going to be a place to look at next year. Uh, if I had to guess, expect a lot of environmental problems out of that region. Uh, it looks like they're going to be doing some major deregulations, which should, mm. in the short term, boost ag output, but in the long term, it will probably hamper their ability to be a significant player uh, just because what they're going to do is going to damage their rivers to the point where I would expect too much sediment to go down them for safe barge traffic. Uh, It's complicated, but uh, basically they're just going to wreck the future of that country's potential. It it will be pretty sad if they see another lost decade. Um, Going over to Africa, they have seen some significant weather as well but domestic uh, production there was not as badly impacted as people thought um they kind of went with the india approach just they have a lot of younger people more people are working in the field and you can kind of overcome a lot of uh, fertilizer pressure if you have more bodies out in the field taking care of weeds and tending to crops in more of a garden fashion So they're doing all right. Europe was able to bounce back from its fertilizer shortages, thanks in large part to that abnormally warm winter last year, which uh, kept fuel prices somewhat controlled. And this year, Europe has figured out other sources of energy from Russia, or different from Russia. And Russian energy has kind of kept China going a bit better, but China can also afford some of the higher fertilizer prices. So they're not doing too bad. They might have some water issues moving on but their production's fine and then Oceana is doing pretty
pretty well, actually, all things considered. Um, Did you say Oceania? Yeah. Okay, you dropped out. New Zealand, Indonesia. Okay. Oh, okay. my apologies. Um, just uh, it, as far as like the Western Hemisphere is concerned, we're doing a lot better uh, from environmental standpoint. So a lot of that just has to do with Lula being in charge of Brazil again. Uh, turns out the world's lungs being in charge of a non-sociopath is good for us all. Um, so now we just got to hope Indonesia and uh, Congo don't uh, see increased deforestation in their rainforests, and we'll be doing a lot better. But uh, now um, the uh, the only other major issue I see in like the U.S. is uh, interest rates remain high. So like uh, when farmers most farmers in the U.S., my farm doesn't, but like 95% of farms in the U.S. use operating notes for their day-to-day expenditures. And uh, with interest rates being higher, that has made it far more expensive to farm, but prices are still relatively good. So farmers aren't going broke, but it's not as good as like last year or the previous year. But we're still seeing that farmer income this year has been way better than like, say, five or seven years ago. Definitely much better than like 2014 to 2019. Those were some hellish years, and I hope to Christ we never go back to it. But I am starting to see a lot of farmers get really like agitated with these uh, interest rates, which is kind of reminiscent of what happened in uh, the Jimmy Carter back in '79. So that would be something to keep an eye out for. But with interest rates coming back down, maybe that pressure will subside. Right. But well, other than that, I mean. Well, uh, Kowalski, um, thank you for the ag report, uh, but uh, in the spirit of uh, the year, I, uh, you said uh, we had to choose between a heartfelt message and the ag report and uh, put this up. I say, why not both? <laughs> we can have both. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's, um, what, uh, what, what, uh, what's your heartfelt message? Um. I'll try to make this brief so I don't take up all the time. But um, basically, uh, now that I am a wise 30-year-old farmer with some life You're experience. You're just 30 years some, old. My God. Yes, I know. I was I'm a, the graduating class of 2012. Me too. So, um, oh, my God. Ridiculous. See, okay. <laughs> we're ancient now. But anyways... Um, I just wanted to say um, to your audience and to uh, maybe you guys that um, from what I've experienced in life, I think community is the most important thing you can have. Uh, when I was 10, my father passed away pretty suddenly. And uh, we, my siblings and I, uh, that was obviously pretty tough on us, but we had a pretty uh, robust uh Religious community. I went to a Lutheran parochial school, and the uh, like, just the people around you can really help you weather through tragedies. Obviously, I do not uh, support like taxes going and paying for religious educations for a myriad of reasons. Uh, that's a personal thing, but uh, it's good to have community. When I was nineteen, a freshman in college is when my mom passed away and I was a member of a fraternity and once again it is very good to be in a community of people who are looking out for your best interests. I would just highly recommend as we go into some very turbulent times ahead and as you know people are getting older you're going to have relatives pass away that is an inevitability of life. It's very important to be part of a community whether it is family, found family, close friends or communities such as like DSA or something along those lines. Just do not isolate yourselves and try to, uh, you know, live in a social group. We're social creatures. It's where we do best. So that is my words of wisdom. Well, uh, Kowalski, that wasn't so heartfelt as much as it was words of wisdom, but that's okay. Yes. Um, yes. You know, I mean, there was hearts. There was heart. There, I, mean, I know they were heart. I mean, I know you uh, heartfelt, but we thought it was going to be a little bit more sappy than that. But that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, Kowalski. I never said I was a word doctor. Merry Christmas. You never said you were a doctor at all. I mean, it sounded like you were a doctor. I was 
kind of assumed I was more like a doctor of corn. Yeah, there you corn go. Corn doc. Um, oh, uh, speaking of corn, the corn soda, that stuff tastes like uh, like hot dog water. It's oh, great. Wear, thank you. So. Thank you. Yes, well, you'll be excited to see one of us drink it on air. Very fun. Uh, Kowalski, have a, uh, a, a, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Back at you all. And again, take a, take some time off. You guys have done an amazing job this year. Have Thank a good you. one. All right, Thank bye-bye. you, Kowalski. Very kind. Um, let's, uh... What should we get to here? Yeah, I want to do this, uh, Laura Ingram. I find this just sort of fascinating. Which number is this? It's number 11. Okay. Um, you know, there's, there's two elements, usually, with, um... Well, I, there, there's usually one element with, when you play like a clip like this, and okay. it's that it's just bat crap crazy, and it's just conspiracy theory, and all you got to do is make one primary assumption that is bat crap crazy, and then everything else follows for, from it, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, that is uh, the classic conspiracy theory. She is, it just feels like maybe it's the end of the year, she's getting ready to go on vacation, and not even bothering uh, to even come up with a decent conspiracy theory, she comes up with this theory is 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 pretty hilarious. They're going to be, there's going to be, um, uh, uh, they're they're going to create social unrest, and you will not get, you will uh, be surprised as to why. Yeah, and also it's interesting too because like she, I was trying to find it here, she got moved to 7 p.m. if i'm not mistaken mm. right she got moved out of more of the primetime spot i mean you know knowing fox news she's a little long in the tooth to uh be a woman on air uh in 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 some of their primetime spots but um just i feel like you need to look at her commentary through that angle of kind of professional desperate. angst desperate. yes now at this point given what we're seeing in the courts at the doj and even in state AG offices, and given Democrats, Trump is Hitler rhetoric, is it not logical, at least to consider, maybe even to assume, that some on the left are hoping to spark some type of civil unrest here, which would be followed, of course, by a mass crackdown on civil liberties, or the declaration of maybe a nationwide emergency, all as a way, a protectual way, to usher in, I don't know, nationwide mail-in voting. (laughs) <laughs> now, remember, the left loved the lockdowns, they loved the 2020 riots, and they even loved the weapon that January 6th gave them. And, of course, they, they really, really love the idea of universal mail-in or even uh, Internet voting. Joining me now is Newt Gingrich, former Speaker oh my of the God. House. Let's just think about that. Like, okay, all right, we, we don't need to hear Gingrich now. You ready? This is, this is really gold stuff. Mm-hmm. They are going to, uh, they're trying to say that uh, Trump is Hitler, right. just because he quoted you know, Hitler. quotes Hitler, but I, I came up with it my own. And the plan is, by some on the left, is to get worried about Hitler, create social unrest mm-hmm. as a pretext for some massive lockdown, presumably because there's... So, like a full-on, I don't know, martial law declared. Right. And they declare martial law, the leftists, and lock everybody down just so that we can have mail-in ballots. Right, because then if people are locked down, they have no choice but to vote from home or on the internet. Um, I, I sort of feel like... If the idea is that you can just declare martial law mm-hmm. because of the unrest that you've ginned up... Are you really too worried about the method of people voting at that point? <laughs> right, right. It's sort right. of like I don't, I don't know. I think you've sort of. What's the idea? You're gonna, you're going to become a an authoritarian dictator just so you can cheat in an election. What about just being an authoritarian dictator, Sam? So, what would you say in terms of like imposing martial law in the United States would be like the federal statute that would be most like? imposing martial law in the u.s i'm not sure i follow the insurrection act would it not 
Would oh. that not be the closest thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that uh, Trump wants to mm-hmm. uh, invoke. The, yes. the, the thing that Trump has now. Well, he's been... o- he only wants to do that because he wants to impact the 2026 uh, election. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I forgot. So, but like, it's just, it, it's amazing how conservatives, just every accusation is, is It's just so desperate. It's just yeah. the end of the year. Everybody's on vacation. Who's left? Oh, Gingrich will come on. What mm-hmm. will we talk about? How about make up some type of thing that Democrats are hoping for civil unrest like these two people on the screen are dinosaurs just to be clear truly just to be clear the reason why we had an expansion of mail-in balloting a we should have it anyways Mm -hmm. but b the reason why we have it was because when people get in close proximity to each other during a pandemic it tends to to exacerbate the pandemic Mm -hmm. that's that's the idea it wasn't that there was social unrest they weren't doing mail-in balloting because people were protesting uh about george floyd uh uh uh, being uh uh, killed and murdered by a cop that it was it was the covid thing now right she had said they're they're going to try and uh unleash a new a new pathogen Pand- right a new pandemic to create a new pandemic right then at least it would match up but this was super lazy super lazy because like the 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 new yeah the new covid doesn't even come into play it's just because she can't acknowledge that covid was a thing so like the covid thing was made up for the lockdowns for the mail in ballots and now they'll just do the lockdowns for the mail in ballots because obviously that was always the uh the desire of the the lockdowns that happened under the trump administration Right, there's more like the when when people were most was to, locked that was to down. lull everyone into a state of <laughs> uh, the 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 deep state did that obviously. Fauci had unlimited power. Calling from an eight one three area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is uh, Matt in Virginia. Sorry. Matt in Virginia. We don't have too much time yeah. today, so what's on your mind? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I'm a film critic and editor for Movie Web. I just wanted to mention that Israelism, the film is available to rent only until December 31st. It's, it's a wonderful look at, uh, I mean, it was filmed before, obviously, October 7th, <laughs> but it's a really heartfelt look uh, at young American Jews who are realizing the horrors of occupation. I plugged that um, last week when they had a, a free showing. I can't remember what night it was, but yeah, we'll put the, a link to that again. Uh, where can you rent it? It's IsraelismFilm.com. Only until uh, December 31st. We it's not available with on the, uh, streaming at all? No, not no. Yet. They're going to look for a distribution deal uh, next year, but for now it's only available for the next, I guess, 10 days. Okay. So. All right. Well, but, appreciate um, the call, man. Yeah. Have a great, Have a great uh, New Year's. Yeah, you too. You too. Um, that uh, we had talked about that the other day. They were, I think, they were streaming it for free at one point. Call from a two zero six area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, uh, this is Brandon from Portland. Brandon from Portland. What's on your mind? Got to be quick. I just want to share a little story from. Yeah, no, it's quick. Uh, I just want to share a little story that I had at work the other day. Okay. So, uh, one of my coworkers and I were talking a little bit about the Israel-Palestine conflict. And his opinion is that America needs to stop talking with Israel entirely. Um, I kind of said that I think we should probably stop funding their military, probably help more. What did it stop talking to Israel? Like, he just wants America to stop interacting with Israel in, entirely. And I don't really understand. Are you guys, function. is he in high school? No, he's actually a couple years older than me, which is kind of funny. He's Are you funny. in elementary school? Because, <laughs> wait, what do you mean? Like, stop talking. Like, we, like, like, treat it like it's North Korea. Hmm. Like, we talk to, I, I like, we have meetings with Iran, I mean, even. Right. I, I didn't really ask him to elaborate because the, the really funny part is what he said next, which is, that he hopes when the Republicans are back in power next year, that hopefully they'll make things better and fix our economy while they're at it. 
Oh, all right. Well, there you go. Appreciate the call. Strange. Uh, yeah, no problem. Strange, you well, strange I also, right. I got, thought it was really weird because I also asked him where he felt about Ukraine and Russia, and he thinks that it's important we keep funding Ukraine. And I'm like, to the, to the left of Republicans on funding Ukraine and to the left of most Democrats wanting to stop, like, do something with Israel. But you support conservatives? Like, it's just so baffling. I walked away yeah. not really knowing what to think of it. <laughs> well, I appreciate the call. You know, the bottom line is people don't always have, like, a cohesive uh, uh, idea of, of certain things. All right. Uh, call from a 509 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? 509. Is this me? Ronald Reagan. This... Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, Merry Christmas. Okay. So um, I wanted to talk real quick about immigration. You guys were talking about these polls uh, the other day that show that um, people are kind of like all over the place with, you know, they want people deported, but they want people to have work permits and um so i wanted to give you my take on that if that's okay I'll yes please please do okay so i think everyone starts out with the kind of basic belief that that there's an immigration system that exists that sort of works and there's some sort of equity and it it's somewhat um of a meritocracy where like if somebody's really good and really wants to be here like they can be so this is what is underlying sort of most people um most people's ideas about immigration um and we can see that we can see and, that in the context of like you know when um you know a local you know everybody's like oh uh fernando's getting uh deported oh he's been uh you know he's been here for years and he's he's one of the good ones and we we, we shouldn't yeah. allow him to be deported People don't understand. That's just par for the course. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a, I mean, I should say there's nothing, this is not a mistake. This is not a bug. This is a feature. Right. And as, as an immigration attorney, we see this all the time, like the white saviors that come in with their Mexican. I, I work mostly with Mexicans. So, you know, it's a, it's a landlord or it's a, a farmer or somebody who's like, you know, I'm going to rectify this because they have this sense that like the system exists and, if I show up with my whiteness, like certainly we'll be able to sort things out. And what I found is when you can disavow people of that, there's one of two reactions. One is like, wow, this is bad and it should change. Or people will fall back on the same tropes and you realize like, you know, they're just racist <laughs> basically. Yeah. But I, I wanted to give one quick anecdote. Please. Um, to, to highlight how insane our immigration system is. So uh, the first hypothetical is Juan. He came to the United States in 1995 when he was 10 years old. He entered without inspection, totally undocumented. He now has a 21-year-old U.S. citizen child. He's always been employed, all the good stuff, right? Taxes, never been in trouble. Well, in 1999, his U.S. citizen uncle filed a petition for his mother. And as long as his mother entered the United States prior to December 21st of 2000. And there's a million caveats, but he does have a path to permanent residency to get a green card. Now, same hypothetical, all the same, you know, taxes, whatever, been here since he was 10, never left the country, high school graduate, whatever, all of that. But in the second scenario, the mother entered the United States on December 22nd of 2000. This guy's fucked. No green card. And, and, it, and so, like, Sam, when was your mom in the United States on or before December 21st of 2000? And, like, could you prove it? Because that's the other thing is, like, we're constantly having to get, you know, yeah. your mom's pay stub from December of 2000. And, um, you know, there's people who technically qualify on that one little point but who can't prove it. So they're also in the, in the screwed category. And this is just like one tiny example. And it seems like this is really obscure, but it comes up all the time. Like, you know, December 1st, December 21st, 2000, like, why do I even have that date memorized? And it's, it's because it's just one of many 
arbitrary laws on top of arbitrary laws and it none of it makes any sense have a happy new year uh i love you guys thank you for Ron you, Reagan. Reagan. thank you thank you for your contributions to Say the show love you this back year to him. i love you too oh look at that i love you too <laughs> are we hungry yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, there you go that's the story that's i finally open up uh, right, and he, right. He leaves. I mean, one of the biggest problems that we have in this country, and we're watching uh, Democrats sort of run away from immigration as an issue again. They're terrified. They're uh, in the Senate trying to negotiate um, uh, immigrant and refugee rights away uh, with the hopes of getting uh, Ukraine funding. Um, the the there has been such a failure on the part of Democrats to articulate what immigrants actually go through. Because, you know, in, in, yeah. um, and Ronald Reagan made this point, not the Ronald Reagan, the, the former president, our, our, Ray Gunn. our caller, Ray Gunn, our uh, caller, made this point that, uh, as an immigration lawyer, that the American public will, in polling, basically support things that are contradictory yep. because of their complete misunderstanding of the ability for people to get here uh, it, it, through our immigration process, the functioning of our immigration process, uh, all of those things that are involved in it. You know, the, the perception is like the immigrants just come here and they just get free everything. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason why they come here, as opposed to the reality, which is they're coming from a horrible place. Uh, it, 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 either there's a lot of violence or it's impossible to make uh, any type of living, in, in particularly in many places in the world because of uh, U.S. interference. But put that aside for a moment. But they're coming here to basically do what everybody perceives is like the most wholesome American thing. You know, provide for your family, have a job, become an upstanding citizen. Uh, but yet, uh, we don't we don't hear enough about how difficult it is. There's no line. You know, you get back in line, you're talking about 10, 12, 15 years, maybe. And yet, on the right, they can demagogue this stuff. Here is Jesse Waters on Fox with former Trump advisor Stephen Miller, probably the guy, probably, we don't know this for a fact, who uh, is coming up with lines like, if we let in these immigrants, they're going to poison the blood of the country. Yeah. Uh, here he is, a uh, despicable... Um, uh, and this, bigot. sorry, this this feeds into my theory that, like, because this is his... He's been doing more cable news hits recently, Stephen Miller. Um, and, and so, like, you know, as we're, as we're beginning to see, like, Trump's kind of white supremacy getting laundered back into the mainstream, Miller's going to try to make himself more front and center. Well, also, yeah, this is the way he's appealing to Donald Trump here. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Biden's close associates are making money keeping the migrant kids in cages. That's right. One of Biden's main guys on his transition team received $600 million to build a migrant kid compound. You see what they're doing, don't you? Biden just privatized ICE. He's sending your money to his cronies like Andrew Lorenzen Strait to build foster homes for the migrant kids he let in. Pause it. We and should tell you that the um, privatization of these migrant prisons were, began a decade ago, maybe more. Khaki, I think, is one. I remember CACI. There was a bunch of these things where they would tell their shareholders, we're having a problem because crime is down in the United States. And so we are transitioning into immigrant uh, detention centers. Yep. This has been a long time move. I, I, I don't doubt that uh, there are big contributors for both parties that are doing this. But it is rich to hear uh, Fox News complain about A, privatization, B, in prison. Um, and, and C, uh, protection of immigrants. But go ahead. Appear into the hands of family, friends, and foster parents. Biden supporters are making money off open borders. These migrants are just products that you're paying Biden cronies to house and traffic. 
And if you try to stop it at the source, you're threatening their money. They say you want to kill migrants, but they really mean their cash flow. Let's bring in Stephen Miller. He's the former White House <laughs> senior advisor and founder of America First Legal. I'm telling you, this Fox drone is making more of an impact on the immigration debate than any politician in D.C. is. I'm not sure if that's a compliment for the drone or a condemnation of right. the quality of our politicians in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. but you're right. The underreaction from Washington has left millions of Americans looking to the footage that you see on Fox to understand what is happening on our southern border. And you use the right word. We are being conquered. This is a complete resettlement of America in real time. It took hundreds of years, going back long even before our founding, going back all the way to the earliest days of the colonies in America, to slowly build everything that we have. And now when you have millions of people coming in from different cultures... Pause it for one thing. I will say this. like the, um, the resettlement of America is an interesting choice of words here. Um, first off, we have plenty of room. Uh, we need more housing in this uh, uh, country, without a doubt. But the drone but footage shows a lot of people. There's a lot of people, uh, but we <laughs> we can easily absorb uh, immigrants if we decide to. But the idea that the resettlement, as if like, wait a second, the, there's a suggestion that maybe these people were here before. Is he he's somehow acknowledging that maybe we well, had sort of like a? Well, they're also just doing, you know, uh, that what 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 white supremacists like uh, Stephen Miller like to do is they like, take the flavor of the, the month or whatever, the accurate descriptions uh, that the left are using to identify, you know, what's happening, say, in Israel and Gaza, mm -hmm. um, and then just water it down. In the same way, you know, Biden's doing an insurrection of a sort. Biden's, you know, selling off the country of a sort. And I wanted to find this before we move on. From the ACLU, during the Trump administration, ICE expanded the immigration detention system by over 50%, signing contracts to open over 40 new detention facilities, this expansion overwhelmingly benefited private prison companies, which housed 91% of all people held in detention centers that opened during those years. This is just complete projection. It's super clear where the private prison industry aligns itself with, and they're just pointing to the case that... You know, I'm sure there are private prisons that also support Biden, but we know the reality here. They're just trying to obfuscate. Go ahead. Ways of living in different belief systems. They're going to take those belief systems with them to America. So a generation from now, I am telling you, Jesse, people will not know the country that they are living in. These consequences are permanent. Unless there is massive, large scale deportations by the millions, it will be irrevocable. Well, now I believe two thirds of the country wants deportations. Two thirds and soon it'll be three quarters and soon it'll be 95 percent. The more that people find out what's happening, the more they are crying out, pleading, begging, begging for deportation, which, of course, is what Donald Trump has promised that he would do if he gets back in 2025. But I think today there's another significance to today. You talked about it with your previous guest. December 19th will be remembered in history because two things happened today. At the same time, we found out that it was the worst day in American history for illegal immigration, the worst day in history. And we also found out the radical left judges said Donald Trump can't be on the ballot in Colorado. So you see a two front attack on democracy. They are saying to American citizens, you can't vote. You don't have a voice. You can't be heard. And they're also saying we're bringing in new people that we think will agree with us and support us and their families will vote for us. And they are going Going to be the new base of power in this country. This is in real time. What we are witnessing is the engineered political transformation of this country. And Joe Biden is the ultimate insurrectionist since he is the one who has engineered and implemented this entire scheme okay. of resettlement. Um, so there it is. I mean, there's Emma's like, you know, projection. He, he, he put it all together in like one big uh, mm -hmm. sort of like a, a ice cream sundae. Um, but Essentially, the substance of that substance uh, that uh, Sunday is the Great Replacement Theory. I mean, that's uh, that's basically it. They've been pushing this for a long time. This is his way of uh, of, of talking to uh, the the you know white supremacist followers. 
Uh, the reason why he says that Americans need to find out what's going on is because th this stuff genuinely um, does not impact uh, uh, Americans in any way. This is, you know, more of uh, folks worried about their, you know, the caravan and uh, the people coming to uh, take away their Minnesota, uh, you know, uh, summer lake houses. Um, and uh, we've seen this demagoguery. We saw it from the Eric Adams administration, in New York, saying that it was going to cost something like uh, $10 billion uh, extra to, uh, to deal with uh immigrants and it turned out the numbers at the end of the year were uh, less than half of uh, of what they had projected it being um this is this has always been um you know sort of the cri de coeur as it was of uh of folks who are xenophobes yeah and um so i mean you know the the buffalo supermarket shooter was a great replacement theory believer um and for people that may not know that it's essentially that the white population is going to be replaced and there's an active effort to um basically replace them with non-white folks in uh majority white countries because this country is becoming more diverse by the year um, but there's different variations of it, too. And one of them is that it's at the behest of the Jewish elite, the cabal, um, the anti-Semitic, really like deeply vile. You know, when they bring up Soros, they'll often think that Soros is the mastermind puppeteer behind Great Replacement. So when they say for money, when they say that Biden's doing it for money, that's also a nod to that, in my opinion. And understand the reason why they, they do that, the the. the um uh, th I mean, this is where the Jews um, sort of like enter into the right. the uh, white supremacist formula. We've said this many times, but uh, you should be aware of it. The way that they justify, like if they both think that they are better than black people, brown people, but that black people and brown people are taking stuff from them. And are uh, beating them in some way, in yes. some type of race. The reason why they're able to do that is because the Jews are the ones who are pulling the strings and they're the one uh, pouring the money in exactly. so that that happens. I mean, that's not, basically the... They're uh, not thing. smart enough to do it themselves. You know, it's got to be the, the Jews, exactly. as always. Right. Right. Very uh, sneaky in that way. Um, let's, l let's look into this. Um, we got very excited about the... The T that um, um, that uh, George Santos was spilled, or spilled and was uh, teasing, if you will. <laughs> um, he told us about uh, uh, Republican Congresswoman. What, what's her name? Um, Malio Stocktips. Malio Stocktips. What's her first name? Uh, Nicole Malio Takis. She represents Staten Island. Nicole Republican. Stockalopoulos. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I call her. And um, uh, here. You'll recall that Tim Burkett had said at one point, right, that Nancy Mace mm -hmm. had a story to tell about Kevin McCarthy. And this is why it's interesting, because Nancy Mace, right, has positioned herself as a more moderate member of Congress than the rest of the MAGA folks. And so when she joined Matt Gates and Burchett, who's, a you know, a, a lunatic, um, it seemed like an odd pairing because she was not of those kinds, of, that ilk, right? And so people speculated as to why Nancy Mace would join those, that eight, that eight uh, the group of eight, to, to vacate Kevin McCarthy. Um, and we might know why soon. Here, um, now, as you know, the, the judge has ruled that um, the Jeffrey Epstein you know, uh, logs essentially, uh, need to be revealed. And I think that's in mid January, if I'm not mistaken, uh, remains to be seen what's going to happen to the judge. But, um, here is, uh, Tim Burkett on a, um, on some, uh, where is this? What show is this? This was Benny Johnson. He's on the Benny. conservative, uh, Benny Johnson program. And, uh, Burkett says that there's actually, not only are there people in the New York in the um, Republican caucus who are worried about this, but that they've been changing their votes. This is real, uh, how, you know, House of Cards. Is that what it was? Yeah. Uh, type of stuff. Here is uh, uh, Burkett on that uh, show. Their portfolios and they love their money more than they do anything else. 
and they protect it and they protect the people that that do that and by doing so you know the old honey pot the russians do that and i'm sure members of congress have been caught up why in the world would would good conservatives vote for crazy stuff like the, what we've been seeing out of congress it's how it works you're visiting you're out of the country or out of town or you're in a motel or bar at, in dc and some whatever you're you're into women or men or whatever comes up and they're very attractive and they're laughing at your jokes and and they and you're buying them a drink next thing you know you're in the motel room with them naked and naked next thing you know you know you're about to make a key vote and what happens some well-dressed person comes up and whispers in your ear hey man there's tapes out on you were you in a motel room on whatever with whoever and then you're like "Uh uh-oh and said you really ought not be voting for this thing i mean you know and what do they do it's human nature and um you know, no man or no woman actually is an island, and they know what to get at. You know, if it's women, drugs, booze, it'll find you in D.C. and in most elected offices. And that's what people of power and influence do. And it's just, you know, I've been in this game my whole life. I've spent 16 years in the state legislature in Tennessee and eight years as county mayor. And now I'm in my fifth year of Congress. But it, it's just it, it, the stakes are higher, but the, but the game is still the same. That's interesting. It is interesting. But you know what? I think this is a good argument. Like, you know, we heard this uh, for a long time that uh, gay people should not be in any type of like uh, in, in our government or in our military because they can be easily blackmailed. And that was at a time where a lot of gay people felt like they had to be in the closet because of the nature of our society. We're very hostile to gay people. Um, still there are, there are towns and there are locations and there are states, uh, where there's a lot of hostility towards gay people. Um, but it does seem to me that maybe what Burkett is making clear is that Republicans are a national security threat in and of <laughs> themselves because they, um, I mean, for instance, we have this story now of, uh, Ziegler's. This uh, couple in Florida, one guy is the uh, chair of the Republican Party. He's had to step down now because of a uh, of a lot of evidence that he uh, was involved in a rape, uh, that he raped uh, a woman. And the woman is a uh, part of a um, a thruple. I yeah. guess. Did I say that right yep. this time? Also, yeah, just, you did. just to clarify, he hasn't actually stepped down yet. Oh, he hasn't. All been calling duty, for all of his duties have been stripped. And he's, he's been like, stripped of been all reduced. duties and stripped of his salary, but he's yeah. still in name yes, only. Exactly, he's right. still, he's still hanging on <laughs> like yeah. the water White skis are behind yeah. him. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, so Ziegler, uh, the the Ziegler couple, she is a big Moms for Liberty who has mm-hmm. been trying to strip. Uh, You know, it's basically been behind a lot of the don't say gay uh, legislation in Florida, trying to pull out any type of books in uh, the education system that in any way reference gay people. She is part of this throuple. And apparently now in the course of this invest the rape investigation, they have found another video where she is with another woman or it's uh, and you wonder like. You know, first off, the, the, there's obviously the, the real issue is that they project this, uh, these conservative piety. values yeah. and piety, and it makes them um, a possibly like security threats because they can be so easily blackmailed. I mean, if somebody's changing their votes in Congress, but I will also say, too, I have this, this theory about, about why she does this, like and I, I don't, uh, Ziegler's, you know, oh, like, yeah. like, how do you get out there as a moms of liberty and work so hard to demonize gay people and to demonize and normal, you know, like to prevent the idea of gay people being normal. And then, I mean, if there's two videos of her engaged and there's, you know, she's clearly in this, uh, uh, thruple. But if there's other videos of her um, being involved with women, that how do you do this? Like, is it how do you go out there and try and make gay people illicit and then also 
you're engaged in, you know, you're shooting video of yourself because this is a video that was on her husband's phone. So she clearly sent it to him. And I really think what it is, is like, you know, in some instances, you got people who are, um, it's self hate. And yeah. when they get a chance to legislate, they, it projects outward. Oh yeah. But I also think in, built in with that is that like, it makes, it is a, it is a genuine perversion, sexual perversion in the sense that like the more illicit being gay is, the more sort of like exciting it is that mm -hmm. she's actually it's engaging. It's so dirty. It's, it's so, so wrong. It's so wrong. Yeah. What she's doing is so wrong. Like, yeah. and I don't know her background. I've tried to find this out, but like, you know, if, if, if there's like a, she comes from a fundamentalist background because it would make sense that yeah. that this is and it's almost like a one person like i can't like she can't imagine it being wrong enough she literally needs to go out there and make it so illicit within her society that her participation in it is that much sort of like you know exciting and and dangerous i mean it, it no is. it's a good theory um and you know i can't understand like i guess the that kind of level of the excitement that comes from that probably due to the fact that maybe she grew up in like a household where it was that that repressive um but i also just wanted to bring it back really quickly to kevin mccarthy because you know, again, to the Nancy Mace point, and I don't know about the sexual stuff, like in terms of blackmail and hookers or Epstein as it relates to McCarthy. But this keeps going under the radar. That Abby, you know, or not Abby Grossberg, what was her first name? The woman that sued Tucker Carlson? Oh, it is Abby. You know, when she, she alleged on her first day of Tucker Carlson tonight that she discovered many photographs of you know, Nancy Pelosi in the bathing suit in the office. She also alleged that a member of Carlson's staff called Grossberg into his office and asked her whether Maria Bartiromo, whom she had worked with before uh, Carlson, was having sex with Republican Representative Kevin McCarthy, now the U.S. House Speaker. There were also allegations about Kevin McCarthy having an affair with then-Congresswoman Renee Elmers, the Weekly Standard description of uh, uh, is typical of recent reports on the red, blah, 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 about Speaker. This is what came up when he was about to become Speaker. S uh, slate notes, and then there were allegations of an affair, but says only questions about McCarthy's conservatism, not the Benghazi probe, or the alleged extramarital dalliance are likely to factor this time around. Okay, so there have been multiple allegations of Kevin McCarthy straying outside of his marriage. Nancy Mace apparently had some personal problems with Kevin McCarthy, and Burchett has now alluded to this multiple times in reference to McCarthy. And I'm not saying that, like, having an affair is the worst thing on earth, but it seems to be, like, I, I want a little bit more digging into the Nancy Mace decision and how it relates to some of these other things that are yeah, under the Yeah, Burchett's got to release the file. Yes, I mean, release the file. Do a Madison Cawthorn. Another, you know, allegation of all that. Yeah, the he didn't really go as far as he I did. know. I know. Um. All right, get some IMs. Sam's old lady glasses. What really? Uh, Kowalski sounds <laughs> no, at good. least sixty-two. Yeah. I appreciate that comment. <laughs> uh, Grunkle Chubs. I uh, I also have a message I want to pass on. Uh. A message from a fellow Discord community member, quote, I'm pal Palestinian and want to say thank you to the show for caring about civilians in Gaza when very few little outlets are. My hometown of Bethlehem is uh, canceled Christmas because we're in a state of mourning, but Merry Christmas to everyone who celebrates and happy holidays. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, not. She's a self-loathing bisexual. Yes. Fizzy drinks. I heard strip, pull out, and thruple. You have my undivided attention. <laughs> Demian, oh gosh, did you see Steven Crowder debated Piers Morgan? It's no wonder he's terrified of debating Sam. He's so bad at debating, not even debating, just having a conversation. It's so bad I couldn't finish it. Mm -hmm. What do we have that? Uh, oh, oh, right. Hold on. Uh, we have a special phone call. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, my understanding is this is uh, you're calling from a, a 201 area code. Is this correct? Hey, yeah, I am. Uh, hey, what's up, Sam? I'm a. Uh... Hey, Bradley. Brendan. Da, 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 da. Charge. Brendan. Good to hear Where you. have you uh, been? Brendan. You calling in to say uh, why you haven't been into work for a year? <laughs> <laughs> I've been working. I've been working for 
state governments and uh, my office is closed today except for me so i'm i'm holding it down and i see uh, they uh, gave you a speaker phone didn't they brendan oh uh, sorry now i'm off speaker phone. okay there this you is go how, this is how long you've Miss been away you take Miss enough you, you take enough calls i guess you remember i thought i thought that rule was always the uh, fugazi basically no but it's real not. Uh, no. Big shot uh, trying to call in now where he gets a speakerphone in his office. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Speed dial, speakerphone, you name it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just calling, you know, ahead of 2024. You know, the polling doesn't look – it's it's troublesome. Let's just get down to the fact of the matter. It's not looking good. And I think, you know, the left is really, you know – you know, for coming up short in a number of ways, but I think we're losing a thing that's really flown under the radar in the past few weeks. And I know I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it is uh, the loss of our sense of humor amidst all this. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about in particular um, the wrongful termination of Andy Borowitz from uh, the New Yorker. I didn't you know? hear about this. Oh my God. Um, I, I, is this political remember, correctness you know, run amok? How come you can't make it? This is. is the problem is that you can't make really bad puns and um, <laughs> simple like um, uh, two column connection jokes anymore in this country because everybody's too PC to um, the comedic or or I should say uh, CC too comedically correct <laughs> now. Yes. Yeah, I think I think you know we got a big problem on our hands with Trump, and the only the only way you can fight fire is with fire. And I think losing Borowitz in this fight is really gonna. <laughs> I honestly really gonna pinch us. I did not hear the, about that. The is there days. is there a story? Is Borowitz speaking out? Um. Yeah. <laughs> who's gonna call yeah, Trump the gonna big go joker on. in the White House? <laughs> what is Whoa! It? Who's gonna call Trump that big joker? content what's I happening know. is he speaking out or what's what's going on is there a controversy i don't know I, I i thought you would know because i remember when i when i got to the majority report you were like what david dayan is to the policy news that we share <laughs> on the majority report andy borowitz does that for <laughs> our sense of humor <laughs> And I was like, I don't even know what that is. This guy uses a lot of extended metaphors that I can't follow, but, you know, I need a job. That so sounds wait, like Sam. You're that suggesting that I, I, like I was uh, deifying, uh, you're saying I was deifying a a Andrew Borowitz <laughs> on this show. That's that's correct, yeah. Mm. Well, you know, I... I, I I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you've, you've now just sort of blown my cover. Uh, <laughs> years of pretending I didn't like uh, Andy Borowitz. And uh, now the Borowitz report is gone. Wow. Um, d More on yeah. comedy. It, it seems to be mo at least Condé Nast and The New Yorker are saying it's mostly based on cost-cutting measures. Oh, sure. Mm, right. Sure. Deep state stuff. Um I, uh, it's obviously like, uh, some, uh, plants in the deep state still loyal to Trump who don't want, uh, Borowitz out there with his cutting humor and uh, undercut, uh, Trump's thing. All I can sit and pray is that for, uh, for Christmas, somebody gets me a Borowitz report Substack uh, subscription. That's the only <laughs> thing I can hope is going to happen. God willing, someone in, is generous enough out there to support, you know, the show in that way. Well, It'd Brendan, very brave. I, I have mixed feelings about you calling in. I'm glad to uh, hear from you and uh, give you the opportunity to, to wish you a um, uh, Merry Christmas. But I am, uh, I am, I feel horrible that you had to bring such bad tidings. Deeply troubled. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but I, 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 I really did think you would know. I thought you were going to have. I know. A I'm, I'm, I'm that sort you of shocked. Into a YouTube clip and you know change the tides of you know what's coming down. We need, uh, you we know, need these people he now. Needs to we go need on your voice. I may have a problem with That's my phone I because say, I have yeah. a, uh, yeah. uh, I had a uh, like a Google News alert for Andy Borowitz on, obviously, <laughs> and it it, it didn't uh, it didn't come through. Well, oh. uh, so so you're you're saying now that also big tech is silencing. Uh, sounds like as well. it. It's, it sounds like a cabal. 
of some kind. I don't know how this didn't trend, uh, but uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. All right, Brent. Um, well, well you, have a great uh, holiday, buddy. Yeah, good happy New Year to you, to you guys. Like happy guys, holidays. Love you all. And uh, hopefully, we get you in the good fight in the uh, studio soon. Yeah, come hang out, dude. I know. I gotta come up, and I'll work from up there or something. Figure right. something out. All right. All right. Bye bye. Take it easy. See ya. Bye guys. Bye, Brendan. Steve Austin. Bad. My bad humor. The posit uh, dog collars can also be repurposed as purity ball bracelets. Okay. Congressional baseball fan, I have a special message for Tim Poole. If he's running out of compound states with all the permanently single men he has living there, I can get him a smoking deal on some property in Guyana. It's a fully equipped compound. It comes with complimentary water coolers. If only used once, he can rename the place Guy Island if he wanted. There's a lot of stuff going on in that uh, Congressional baseball fan. Uh, I am right there. Sam's beautiful glasses. I wonder if self-hating queer folks think it's okay to have whatever kind of sex they want so long as they know to feel ashamed about it. <laughs> Anyways, happy uh, holidays, uh, crew. Uh, Sonny Woa, have a fantastic break. I'm going to thank you guys every day, uh, Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Uh, well, we have best ofs, so yep. you can check those out. Jenna, uh, Jenna, hey, MR fan, it's Jenna from Fremont. Exciting update. I got my surgery date, January 16th. I'll Ooh. finally have my vagina. So much to be grateful for in 2024. Uh, love you all so much. Left is best. Congrats and good luck. Congrats. Gerald from New Orleans. Hello, Tushy. Stripping duties since 2015. Okay. Uh, the pre-recorded chat crew. Sam, may we please have a show far for longtime fan of the show, uh, Shana Lynn. She's fighting lung cancer, and we want to celebrate her. Also, trans rights or human rights. All right, Shana, this is uh, for you. Good luck. Hang in there. Uh, bug chasing Sam as a deviance enthusiast. Where are all my democratic freaks at? Do we have any poly reps? Uh, Steve Austin, these people, Ziggler's are sociopaths looking for a quick path to power. They believe the rules don't apply to them. Uh, do we have that? What is that, uh, Rogan clip? Um, so Rogan, Joe Rogan was on with, uh, Bo Nickel, who's a, uh, a UFC fighter. And, but they got to talking about politics about, cause of, um, Trump appearing at some, UFC fights and they were they were making a reference to a to a comment about like oh Biden is so kind of like doddering and stuff he he said this thing about um the revolutionary war having airports or something like that so that's where they start and then ultimately they get corroborated by Jamie the producer later in the clip so they get corroborated or they get well uh, well sorry okay. f- fact fact, fact checked, checked. And, okay and so uh we can play the first part and then we'll pause it and then go to when they get okay fact checked. so here it is uh Joe Rogan uh you know uh, talking politics uh with a UFC fighter and then just you know he, he's uh uh, path dependent is that what it's called like you get captured by your own narrative here is uh more of joe rogan uh spreading um misinformation disinformation who knows i was I've like never heard a crowd like over that. a minute of people screaming at the top of their lungs as he's walking in nuts this country is fed up <laughs> yeah this is a Seriously. fed up country yeah Whether, that- you know the mainstream media can say all the shit they want and they're trying mm-hmm. but the people aren't buying it no you and that's it. the perfect example right there is you know twenty thousand people or whatever like losing their minds when the dude's walking yeah. to the cage it's like there's no fighter that gets that but yeah the country it's like you can tell. You just talk to people or, or see what's going on. It's like, you could tell. Well, you know, there's people that voted for Biden that are doing it now. That, yeah. That they're like, I, what did I do? Right. Like, what did I choose? Like, I, how is this guy? Yeah, you just can't listen to an interview or he's saying some of the stuff he says that just makes no sense at all. It's like, you, you can't listen to those interviews and feel like you made a good decision. I, I don't know how you did. Could. You hear what he said? Like, yes, Pause it for one second. You know, when you, this is like a classic, you know, where Rogan goes like, I have a friend who's a teacher mm-hmm. and, or she's married to, he's, he's married to a teacher and there are kids who are going in and they are, uh, using kitty litter and identifying as a cat. Yeah. He knows so many teachers. So, so many teachers. I mean, this is a classic setup for that. All right, here we go. Yeah. You just can't listen to, an interview 
or he's saying some of the stuff he says that just makes no sense at all. It's like you, you can't listen to those interviews and feel like you made a good decision. I, I don't know how Did you Did you hear what he said like yesterday or a couple of days ago? Mm -mm. He's talking about the Revolutionary War. He's like, one of the reasons why we lost the Revolutionary War, one of the problems with the Revolutionary War was they didn't have enough airports. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that? I saw that. <laughs> like, what that? The hell? like, pull him. <laughs> it's if, crazy. If, if you were, if you had any other job <laughs> and you were talking like that, yeah. they would go, hey, you're done. If you okay, now, just the, now. I mean, that's a crazy thing. That's a crazy thing to say. It's a crazy thing to say. And you know that Rogan heard it. Uh -huh. He's actually literally like remembers how he heard it and he does the actual vote, the voice. Yeah. He's looking around. Did you see that? Did you see that? Like, it sounds like he saw it. Yeah. Right? I mean, he's because the everyman. Like, that's why you like to go on that on that show is just like, it's like a regular conversation. Even when they're talking about politics, they speak like, you know, people are saying and you can do this. Meanwhile, and, just to be clear. Yeah. Donald Trump, he didn't quote, according to him, uh, Adolf Hitler. He just came up with the exact same phrasing himself. So one way or another, right? I mean, it's not like Donald Trump doesn't uh, um, uh, speak crazy talk. But here he is. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Okay, let's play. Let's let's see it. Uh, pull it up, uh, producer. Yeah, that's <laughs> it was slick. It was slick. I was like, it was just cool, dude. Though it was funny. It's but, a weird time because there's people in this country that want to think he's Hitler. I know. It's, yeah. It's uh, it's very strange. Like, you couldn't convince me otherwise. Just hanging Talking out with about the guy. I'm like, man. Well, you know, it's just the media narrative. I mean, so many people were fed this lie that he, the Russia collusion. Yeah. Was this, is this the video you're talking about? Let me see what this one says. I don't think it is. What? Oh. By the way, the same stable genius that said the biggest problem we had in the Revolutionary War is we didn't have enough airports. <laughs> Whoa. So yeah, that's it. Whoa. Right. Uh, what? Just for, now, what's for, amazing about this? Let's play because I want to see when this. He said. The same stable, stable genius. genius. Now, who referred to themselves as a stable genius? Hmm. Do, 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 Oh, you know what? It was Donald Trump. So Joe Biden was quoting Donald Trump. And so not only did Joe Rogan not get what the quote was, but he uh, misattributes it to Joe Biden, who he said, you can't vote for a guy who would say that, even though it was Donald Trump who said it. All right, does it, let's watch the realization. It's Here crazy. We go. Hey, this you is what this? we would say you in Massachusetts. This? Dawn lights on Mobblehead. Here we go convinced me otherwise just hanging out with the guy i'm like man well you know it's just the media narrative i mean so many people were fed this lie that he the russia collusion yeah. was this is this the video you're talking about let me see what this one says i don't think it is what oh. by the way the same stable genius that said the biggest problem we had in the revolutionary war is we didn't have enough airport <laughs> whoa so yeah, that's it. Whoa. Right. Just, what? Just for, for the record. Is that fake? It's not fake, but he was referencing Trump saying that. Here's what Trump saying it in 2019. Oh. Donald Trump said something about that. He didn't say G Jesus. He said a stable genius, and that's where the, oh. the transcription. Let me hear what it says. What did he say? <clears throat> in June of 1775, the Continental Congress created a unified army out of the revolutionary forces encamped around Boston and New York and named after the great George Washington commander in chief. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware and seized victory from Cornwallis of Yorktown. <laughs> you didn't know Our <laughs> army manned the air, it ran the ramparts, it took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So he fucked up. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. But I feel like uh, that, that, yeah. that happens. That happens. Uh, yeah. He fucked what up. What a moron. That's just so <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so unbelievable. Dude, that is there any more brain. of this? I just want to see how like, like keep playing this because I want to just like how how like like deep crimson. I want to see him turn the same color as that uh, 
that uh, that 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 curtain behind him. I've been seeing ads for Joe Rogan hawking Alpha Brain about how wonderfully acute it makes him mentally on mm. YouTube videos everywhere where I'm seeing it. I feel like this clip kind of just really undercuts the product's efficacy. Well, he is so convinced that he's right, and that he's like going so far with this, and then finds out that it is. It's like it's it's not just 180 degrees different from what he's saying. It's like 180 degrees on one axis and then 180 degrees on another axis. <laughs> it's like literally three dimensionally 180 degrees different, like on like two different axes. Aimed after the great George Washington commander in chief, the Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware. Because Trump has no idea the words that he's even Cornwallis saying. Yep. He doesn't know who Cornwallis is or Our Yorktown or the Valley any of Forge. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So oh, he okay. fucked up. Yeah, yeah, he did. But I feel like <laughs> that's, you, you, too. you can tell too, it sounds like a little you different. Did, like yeah. you can tell he like messed up his words, but yeah. Yeah. He's just, I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's the thing funny. about that's but the thing about media these days. It's like Right. You, you gotta know. look into it. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Just, I mean, that's probably the most coherent thing Biden's ever fucked up. <laughs> like some of the things just, I got geez. have you heard I got hairy legs. Yeah, oh yeah. my god, so many of them. Yeah, remember that, man. I mean it's unfortunate because the guy's older and he really yeah. shouldn't be in that position. Uh, right? I mean, if he, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, you shouldn't be in that position. We're talking about media. You shouldn't be sitting there making tens of millions, hundreds no, of millions you know of dollars, whatever the hell you are. You shouldn't be sitting there speaking to people and telling people the news, you stupid dumbass. I, I dumbass. Fact, like we really got to do. It's the media's fault. You are the media. Unbelievable. How much money do you get paid by Spotify to do media? And his, his contract's media. coming up. His contract's coming up. Understand, folks, that Spotify paid, what, $100 million for, what was it, three or four years? They're not just, this, they're not just, they're the, they're, they're not just hosting his show. They are producing his show. They, they, like, he may be in charge of it, but they're paying him money. They're not just licensing his show. They're, they're paying that money. It doesn't air anywhere else. They pay to have it exclusively on their, uh, <clears throat> on their app. Yes. You know why even freaking, I mean, I know he did this before in the other iterations of the Joe Rogan experience. Um, but like that guy, Jamie is, is fact checking him because he got in trouble for that litter box thing. Yeah. He got in trouble because he is media. Like I, the idea that this guy is still pretending just, like, like he's in his garage, playing it off too. Like, <laughs> but even still, even even still, Biden's too old to do this. Even though the example that I gave to make the argument that Biden is too old to be president was literally from Donald Trump, my point still stands. It, it, it's. I'm just a jag off comedian, just smoking pot, chilling with my UFC friends in my garage. What, what did I make two hundred million dollars as a media figure in order to communicate information? No, 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 no. I don't have people any responsibility for that. To don't listen to, listen to me. Yeah, you know what? People actually shouldn't listen to him. And then maybe that contract renewal won't go as well. Yeah, that won't happen. Unfortunately, but, he has but a really, huge following. I mean, unbelievably. The, I, listen, the responsibility lies with Spotify. Yes. You know, if you want to do a show where you're just putting out stuff like, you know, I'm just I'm basically taking farts uh, and it just coming out as words uh, and people want to watch that. That's a problem with society. But when you're a massive corporation like Spotify and you're paying a hundred billion dollars, they just laid off a bunch of people incidentally too. True. like what is it, like twelve hundred people or something like that? Fifteen, sixteen hundred people. And you're going to be making money off of this. That corporation needs to be held to account. I mean, you, you're allowed to go on uh, these platforms and spout, you know, you can do, you could say that birds aren't real. Uh, it doesn't matter. But when a corporation is making all this money off of it, they need to be held accountable.
it really is amazing. And it, you know, I mean, look, uh, it's one thing for him to come on there and it's fun to watch him get fact checked in real time and, uh, you know, get embarrassed. But, you know, what if like, what if we had a major me medical emergency in the country? Yeah. Like an ongoing like medical, uh, you know, where, and, and you had a guy like that going out and saying all sorts of like misinformation that ended up like maybe costing people their, uh, health. Wouldn't that be a problem? It might be. I would hope it would be. I would think so. Um, speaking of, of right wing talkers, um, the other day, the judge in the Rudy Giuliani defamation case uh, was uh, given a motion uh, by the, um, the plaintiffs who won mm -hmm. $148 million from Rudy Giuliani. And they went to the judge, and usually there's like a 30 days before you're compelled to pay. They went to the jury and they said, you know, Giuliani's going to take these 30 days to try and hide his money. Oh, yeah. And the judge said, I, you know what? That sounds legit because this guy's such a scumbag. He's out there and he has shown no remorse. He's out there really, you know, lying about what happened in court. They say that the judge didn't give him the chance to, to mount any defense. He refused to uh, give up anything under discovery. And so the case went forward. Um, Giuliani has now had to file for bankruptcy protection in bankruptcy court. He, um, he filed and apparently was it a chapter 11, which I guess is, you know, chapter 11 is generally a corporate filing. Uh, but he, uh, I guess there's an, uh, you can have an individual chapter 11 case. And, uh, I, I always thought it was chapter seven, but maybe you can have a chapter 11. Maybe it's because, uh, maybe he's, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why it would be chapter 11, but it's, uh, it is, I uh, do you have the filing. Can you put the filing up? It's up. Oh, it is up. Oh, there it is. Uh, so he owes a lot of money. Let's go through this. Shall we? Yeah. He owes his, uh, CPA $10,000. Um, but that's because they sued him because he didn't pay. And then he owes Daniel Gill, uh, from the law office of Ronald Kuby, um, Ron Kuby, a former, uh, I think Ron Kuby actually ran against him at one point. Interesting. Uh, he is that uh, defense attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, he owes Ron Kuby's firm $2 million. They had to sue him because he's not paying. Uh, um, he also owes uh, Hutcher and Citron LLP, that's a law firm, $1.3 six uh one point uh three uh almost one point four yeah, million, million dollars and then uh he he uh, eric coomer phd um there's a lawsuit uh, unclear uh they don't know how much that's going to be but mm -hmm. that's going to be a liability and that's the uh dominion voting systems oh lawsuit. that's the dominion yes. voting system okay um he also owes what's this iris who's iris <laughs> Oh, Who's, oh, it's the IRS. Oh. He has unpaid taxes. Well, you know what? You know what can happen there if you have unpaid taxes? Um, it can cause the impeachment of your dad. Yes. Uh, Speaking of that, we'll get to that, uh, that family a little bit later in this. $521,000 in unpaid taxes. Ooh, that's bad. Income taxes. I mean, how much money is he making that he's got to owe that kind of money? That's got to be pretty high. Um the creditor doesn't have a lien on your property. Well, that's a mistake. They should. Uh, and then Iris is up again. Oh, two hundred and two thousand dollars. He hasn't paid his taxes in a while. It feels like. Um, I don't know why uh, uh, no. Rudy Giuliani is his own debtor in the next one, but uh, law offices of uh, Idella, Idella and Bertuna and Cammons. That's another three hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars. He owns Momentum Telecom, thirty thousand. That's a lawsuit. Uh, Noelle Dunphy is she the woman who worked for him? The yep. woman he, who he's accused of um, sexually uh, harassing and assaulting. And assaulting, yeah. yes. There you go, unknown. So that's a liability. They just don't know how much it's going to cost them. 
But he hasn't paid New York state taxes. This guy was the attorney general of New York state. He owes $204,000 uh, um, uh, to the New York state. Oh, wait, he hasn't paid another tax bill, $61,000 to New York uh, state taxes. And then Robert Hunter Biden. Hmm. Huh. Who's Robert Biden? Hunter Biden. Oh, he's been sued uh, by Hunter Biden for probably defamation. Uh, that's unknown. And then, of course, there's Ruby Freeman and uh, Weandrea, uh, Weandrea Moss. How uh, many zeros one, is that? That is $148 million. That's a big, uh, that's big. And then Smartmatic. They are suing him, too. Unknown. Yep. Uh, unknown. Uh, and Dominion. This is the Dominion lawsuit. The other one was a defense against the Dominion laws. So uh, yeah, so Eric Coomer was a was a Dominion Voting Systems um, official oh. who Giuliani mentioned uh, many many times in discussing the stuff with Dominion. So he's suing him as well individually, independent of Dominion. Uh, so um, uh, Giuliani is looking for uh, bankruptcy protection from all of these uh, cases and his taxes. Hmm. I really hope the bankruptcy judge he gets is like, I need to see every single dollar you have. And yeah. we're going to put you on a little budget. What could Rudy Giuliani do? Well, at least. He has some he's, friends. He has some friends, but they seem to be not returning his calls. And the reason why I say that is because this is what Rudy Giuliani was doing. Uh, what was this? Yesterday? Let's play this uh, uh, clip from Rudy Giuliani. He's got a radio show. Um, but radio doesn't pay what it used to. In okay. fact, radio never really did. But uh, here it is, Rudy Giuliani hawking this stuff. Driver. Uh, oh, he's taking some pills. Balanceofnature.com. <laughs> Promo code Rudy. Wonderful as a stocking stuffer. Swallow, swallow. It's a great Christmas gift. And not only are you, not only are you supporting everything, you know, you're supporting your body, your mind, your health, and of course, it makes a great Christmas gift. So you're doing that for someone in your life as well. But you're also supporting everything the mayor's doing here on America's yeah, yeah. Mayor Live. And you help me. F you help me fight the traitors. And Let me course, fight the traitors program in the fall of 2022. Hard to believe we're, we're about to hit 2024 and our numbers are skyrocketing. Mm. So thanks to all of you who have been supporting us and been with us for all 303 episodes. Now that is, that's 60. This is the 61st straight week that we've been doing this. Now, you know what I love about this, the, the symmetry here, because here he is um, the FDA uh, just basically uh, gave uh, this company its final warning um, oh, gosh, really? on November 1st, was it? November 16th, 2023. Um, federal judge enters consent decrees against Utah-based dietary supplement distributor and manufacturer Balance of Nature products. The FDA announced that dietary supplement and two executives have been ordered by a federal court to stop producing and selling their products until they come into compliance with federal regulations and requirements under the FDA uh, because they're basically um, um, marketed as dietary supplements with labeling that rendered them unapproved new drugs and misbranded drugs. Huh. FDA has not approved Balance of Nature products for any use. Despite the company's claims, its products could be used to diagnose, cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent diseases such as cancer, heart disease, cirrhosis, diabetes, asthma, and COVID-19. In addition, Evig LLC violated current good manufacturing practices requirements, which rendered its product adulterated dietary supplements. Interesting. Um, could this open up anybody who promotes these products to some kind of litigation? I don't think so okay. I, because i think I don't, I don't know what's that maybe they settled but in july of 2023 balance of nature agreed to a 1.1 million dollar settlement part of which will go to refund california residents who purchased a balance of nature supplement the california food drug and medical device task force filed the complaint against this company uh because of its claims that its products could prevent treat or cure serious diseases including diabetes fibromyalgia 
arthritis, heart disease, and cancer. Now, I mean, you sell this stuff and uh, if it, you can say like, maybe it'll work, but to go out there and make these claims about what it's going to do for diseases, I mean, yeah, well, there, but there's a certain symmetry it's because on one yeah. hand, he is, he is, he is saying he's going to bankrupt because he's made so many false claims, <laughs> so many about Smartmatic, about Dominion, about these, uh, um, uh, election workers. Um, he's made fa false claims insofar as like, I promise I'll pay my taxes. Uh, that didn't happen to two different entities, the state and the federal government. And he's also made some false claims, uh, apparently, according to his lawyers, where he said he would pay them for their services. But the beauty is, and he's trying to make the money back by promoting a company that is in trouble with the federal government for making false claims. There's you know, a, there's a, there's a balance, there's a Balance. natural balance if you will oh oh i will i mean the you know thematic consistency is something that i think we always need to strive for and rudy giuliani has has has, has stuck to it his entire life the arc of his life um you really can can distill it to just a few 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 words right it's there consistent go. there you go um whoopsie hmm. whoopsie whoopsie Oh, uh, Juniper J reminds me that Hunter is suing Rudy over the stolen laptop. Yes. There you go. Right. Um, oh, should we get to, uh, we, should we do that final one? Yeah. What's the final one? Oh, um, your friend, you know, it, this is one thing I just want to say, because we're, we're wrapping up for the year. I don't think we're going to have time for any more calls. Sorry, folks. I um, uh, appreciate you're holding on, but we, we're running out of time. Uh, but we'll be we'll be back in a week. It's not that long. But look, it's the end of the year, and uh, I won't see you probably until January second. Yeah. After you've made your New Year's resolutions. Right. And one thing I don't want to I don't want to pick on you. Okay. But I think one thing that I hope you've learned this year. Okay. That if you want to make friends with people. Mm. you've got to well i mean look if you want like i know that like you you want to be you know you work in here you want to like you know you want to resonate with people when people offer you like you know some friendly like when they reach out to you right and they say like they put themselves out there they put themselves out there and they expose themselves and they make themselves vulnerable to you and they say like hey why not hang out with us Mm -hmm. the boys right right like or yeah. why not have like let me you know come check out like you know like you should see what i got in the back it's really cool like you know like yeah, yeah, i yeah. want you to like <clears throat> they're trying to reach out to you and they're being vulnerable and or they'll say like hey let me treat you to some sushi right some sushi yeah right if you say no, you're, you're making, you're going to hurt their feelings and they'll forget about you. She yeah. was offered a tour, sushi, and poker with the boys. You're right. Like, poker. I didn't, up to, I didn't open myself up to the possibility of new friends. And this is what happens. Okay? Uh, here's uh, Tim Poole uh, interviewing uh, Marianne Williamson. Also, we, uh, well, I got some issues about with his uh, story here about um, uh, the, the book, but let's hear this. First. I want to hear this. And I this would show is, up at the school board as well. So, so I, the reason why I bring up these, these are very specific examples. Uh, this book is gay. Uh, we have this story from uh, ABC. Parents call cops after teacher offers this book is gay to middle schoolers in Illinois. This book provides instruction on, uh, for the use of uh, gay dating apps for anonymous sex. And these are middle schoolers. These are, these are 10, 11, and 12-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So the parents finding out that the teacher was doing this, I mean, that's, that's pedophilia. That's, that's grooming behavior. That, that, that is outright egregious and illegal. When, I, I don't even want to say conservatives, but it seems to be the case when, uh, let's say someone like me, I'm from Chicago, and I grew up with a Democrat family. When I find out that adults are providing children this kind of stuff, I say, that's a bad thing. We shouldn't allow that. However, for some reason... I end up with, uh, we had the woman, um, what was her name from the, the Majority Report? Emma Vigland. Emma Vigland came on and actually defended that these books be kept in middle schools. No, I would not agree with Emma Vigland. 
Yeah, I think so, she hadn't read the book when she made that statement. I could be but, wrong. So, so, so this is the, this is the culture war issue. I, I, and the reason why I bring it up is I often find that people who would align themselves as more Democrat or left leaning are not familiar with the books in question that are being challenged by parents. And so you end up with these stories that are not correct. They'll say something like, you know, oh, to kill a mockingbird. And it's like, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not concerned at all about ideas and philosophy. You know, I think critical race theory as a philosophy, it can be taught in schools, but as, uh, as praxis, I don't yeah. think that's appropriate. So the criticism became with Florida, it, it's not that they had books on critical race theory, it's that they had critical race praxis in books. Which so what are you praxis. calling critical race practice? Praxis. So, uh, for instance, there is a, uh, what was one example? We had... Um, yeah, what was one example? I forgot the woman's name. Uh, was it Asra Nomani? Yeah. That was her name? Mm -hmm. One of the, a lot of the books that they were bringing into Florida would say something like, you know, we have the classic math problem where it says a train leaves Cincinnati traveling 50 miles okay, an hour. Okay, all right. We don't need this anymore. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you something. The uh, Now, first off, I don't think uh, Tim should be allowed to actually even mention your name anymore. Like, I think, like, uh, you know... I mean, he'd said it, like, four, five, six, seven times in the segment after I left, after I said I didn't want to hang out, um, accusing me of wanting to have sex with children. And he said my full name a few times then, after I'd left. Um, but it, It's he, just interesting. I mean, you know, so, so people try. Listen, they posture on camera. I get it. And it's it's it's... You think it's posturing on camera, and that's a that's a that is a very possible answer. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's just that you hurt his feelings so badly that um, he felt. Uh, first off, you humiliated him when you he interviewed you. Okay, a little bit, which was a little bit mean, uh, I think, mm -hmm. to him because it's like literally like picking on a junior high student um, emotionally. Emotionally. Um, I mean, yes, he, he intellectually he close to that as well. Uh, but you you hurt his feelings when you wouldn't play poker and have sushi with the boys, and uh, and and I think it it's hard for him to. I think he's it's not so much that he forgot your name. I think he's blocked it out. I think that's what that's it possible. Is. Um, but I will say this also: there is no ten year old in eighth grade. The teacher taught. Eighth graders. That's where the book is. The book is not assigned. And Tim may not realize this. Uh, but when a book is in a middle school, that doesn't mean that the sixth graders, the seventh graders, the eighth graders, or the ninth graders, because, you know, junior high up in Massachusetts was seven through nine, and in New York, I know it's six through eight. They're not all assigned the same books. People are, are assigned books that are age appropriate. When you're in eighth grade, unless you have skipped multiple um, years, you're not 10, you're not 11, you're not 12. Um, there is no eighth. I mean, I guess it's conceivable that somebody could skip this. I mean, we've had people who are 14 in college, but the overwhelming number of people in eighth grade are 13, 14, or 15. And the idea that for people at that age not to know their sexuality, there's not a handbook on how to get um, uh, anonymous sex on an app. Nope. It is, um, it is about basically telling people like who may not have any support at home, who may have been ostracized. I mean, I imagine the book is not, uh, you know, is a, a little bit older than today, but um, to normalize the fact that they are gay. The idea that you wouldn't have sex ed for 13 or 14 year old students is absurd. In fact, sex education by the national standards starts earlier than when this book would have been assigned oh my gosh in new and york in new york city yeah. the uh, former uh, doe um uh, head of sex ed was was basically he's like you got to tell some stuff to kids when they're six well i said to him in that interview as well um at the time that 
you know, the more children learn about what's appropriate and what's not sexually, especially at the age of middle school, the less likely they are to be groomed and sexually abused. And I asked him to contend with that and he moved well, on. Let me say this. He is now, obviously, I think like you, we, we talk about stuff that we're not uh, experts on mm -hmm. every day. Um, but we try and interview people about it. Much of the stuff that we talk about is simply stuff that we've learned in interviews, maybe stuff that we have read, but show me one sex ed teacher in the country that thinks that book is in a pro that is, that is an actual sexual education teacher mm -hmm. and believes that sex ed should be given to students because there's a lot of like cr Christian fundamentalists and other type of fundamentalists who believe that their kids should not have any sex education whatsoever. They also think that they should not get the HPV vaccine because it's going to make them more sexually promiscuous. But show me one sex ed teacher in the country who thinks it's inappropriate for 14 year olds to read that book, particularly ones who are gay, because this teacher was getting a lot of questions about this stuff and realized there was a need. Show me um, one parent who believes in sex ed that should be given to student, you know, their kids by the time that they're 12, which is way late, incidentally, that would have an issue with this. He doesn't know anything of what he's talking about. He's just espousing this, the, you know, fundamentalist version, vision of yeah. stuff and just spewing it out. And, you know, Marianne Williamson should also know. 14-year-olds should be reading that book. Oh, absolutely. And then, yes, he's right that uh, the specifics of the prop that he showed me at the time, I was not fully aware of that book. Um, but as we say, that's not really our job. That's the job of experts who understand when it is appropriate to teach these kinds of students. And there is really very little controversy except from fundamentalists and parents who have religious inclinations. Um, there, there's no controversy about these kinds of books being shown based on people who are actually um, uh, it, who, who have the ability to make these kinds of assertions because it's their professional life. Like yep. they are supposed to be teaching kids sex ed. And uh, I defer to them. I defer to experts on this matter. But, you know, it seems like Tim doesn't. Well, let's read some IMs and then uh, we'll say goodbye for the year. Wow. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Jake Hands, qualification for office is not a criminal matter. Criminal conviction is not required. A court can rule that he participated. Doesn't even need a jury. Uh, Jake Hands, I, 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 I'm not saying that um, that a court couldn't rule that. And certainly the, the district court, I believe, in uh, Colorado found that he had participated in it. But I'm saying the Supreme Court could say, like, well, he's not really an insurrectionist if it's a legal term and he hasn't been convicted of it. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I'm just uh, speculating. Uh, there were no trials after the Civil War convicted the Southern trash of insurrection. The only Confederate scum to face criminal charges was the commander of the Anderson Vi Andersonville prisoner war camp. So stating Trump needs to be convicted of anything is pointless if you go with the conservative original intent theory. Not that this will stop the Thomas Alito court. But wasn't there any type of statutes that said um, if you that 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 said it by statute that said if you fought for the 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 Confederacy you are an insurrection? I I think I don't know. Uh, monkey business. Supreme Court deciding Trump can't run for the president would be a political disaster on par with the 2000 election decision. There are reasons to oppose the Supreme Court deciding that a wildly popular politician can't run for president that aren't. I'm worried about what Trump supporters would do. Let's appease them. I mean, when you say a political disaster on par with the 2000 election decision, in what way did that play out? I mean, in terms of like the political implications, because I guess Barack Obama won in 2008. Like, what was the political cost? If you're saying that it inhibit, you know, that it's problematic with the um, feeling that the court is valid, that's different. Like it would create some type of uh, crisis for the court. But you know what? This court's already in crisis.
but uh, I get I get your point. Mizrav, Deep State has entered the chat. <laughs> All right, five more. Iowa Hannah, I just left initial hearing for Iowa for SF four nine six. Don't say gay, bookman, etc. The decision for injunction was delayed, but state rep looked very bad in my uh, humble opinion. All right, Equimus. Happy holidays, Left Crew. It was the very best crew. Thanks for a great year. May this new year be the best uh, left year yet. We are so damn close thanks to this great content. Oh, and an aside, court orders balance of nature to stop sales of supplements after FDA lawsuits. Oh, there you go. Well, they're, they're still advertising just a day ago? <laughs> Lydia Rose. Happy holidays, MR Crew. Today is the last day of voice rest after a month due to female vocalization surgery. So excited to have a new voice. Love you all. Have a great vacay. Congratulations on that. Uh, Nate in North Dakota, for anyone who wants to know what your typical uh, racism looks like in the Republican Party, there was a Republican representative out of Wilson, North Dakota, that was arrested. Rob Port from Inform posted a column about this, and he was yelling homophobic, racially abusive, and discriminatory language to the cop. And after the story broke, the North Dakota GOP hasn't even commented about anything about it. I also got word from Joel Heitkamp, host of News and Views, uh, the representative blames it that it was immigrants' fault that he was nailed. All right, two more. Omega. Hi, crew. Happy holidays, Festivus, Chrysler, etc. For all you filthy animals, I hate the general public needs a disaster sometime to see how bad people in office are. Also, any other politicians you embarrassed uh, to be in New York City not named Eric Adams? And the final, I am... Of the, of the year. year goes to really cool. Wow. Congrats, really cool. Peter Thiel, cool. well known communist. Palantir privatized ICE a years ago. Don't forget. Bradley, Matt in absentia, Emma, great job this year. Thank you for remembering my name. What did I say? No. Oh. Dang. Thought that was Lady good. on the Majority Report. Yep. Um, well, Dorsey. John Ahrens. Julie. Chris. Isaac. Isaac. Uh, Maria. Kelly. Oh, uh, Corey and Jacob. AM on Quickie. the AM Quickie. Have I forgotten anybody? No, I don't think so. Uh, great job this year, everybody. Thanks so much for your hard work. And thank you to our audience for sticking with us in 2023. We look forward to seeing you in 2024. Uh, we will have uh, no show on Monday, uh, but enjoy this freebie Friday. It'll last you till Tuesday, and then we've got some best ofs, and we will be back on January second. 2nd. Yep. Tuesday, January 2nd, live. Um, take care of yourselves. If you celebrate Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. And happy wedding in like eight days for Bradley. Oh, shit. Again? Well, we have a, like the party and everything. The real, like the, have a great he's time. He's legally Bradley. married yes, and now you. the party's yes, coming. I will be, it'll be fully, <laughs> I'll, I'll have done it'll everything. Super, we super women. wedded. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Super <laughs> married. Right. Um, we'll see you on Tuesday, folks. Uh, have a happy new year. Be safe. Take care of yourself and, uh, strap in 2024 is going to be quite a ride. Whoosh. Bye. 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 It might take all the strength I got to get to where I want, but I know somehow I'm going to get there. I wasn't looking when I just got caught. Between the truth and the light bar But finding out won't make me feel any better Yeah, I know the clock is ticking But the meds are gonna kick in And my pilot light shining bright I guess I'm where the choice was made for the option where you don't get paid For the road that bends before it finally breaks you I guess I may have lost my drive Between the 101 and the 5 Do you know how far the detail takes you? Yeah, I know the clock is ticking But the meds are gonna kick in my pilot
got great. 